Good evening and welcome back to Drakenheim. This is the Dungeon Dudes weekly Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition livestream campaign and these are the untold tales of Drakenheim where myself, Dungeon Master Monty Martin, are taking our few members of our classic Drakenheim crew, including my good friend Kelly, uh, and some really awesome guests through some side stories and new adventures that will uh, to round out our world of drakenheim um with uh, kelly take it away and i'm kelly mclaughlin in case you didn't get that and i will be playing rufus bilius apollo tonight the twilight domain cleric and i'm a dwarf in, in case that wasn't obvious um <laughs> and we are joined today by some very special guests Jill Denitis, I'm playing Ori Keldo, the Ghostwise Halfling Swarm Keeper Ranger. And I am Alicia Marie, or Alicia Marie Body, and tonight I am playing the soon-to-be Empress of the Domine, 16-year-old Leonin Wild Magic Barbarian, Quinn Shamba. You can call me Quinn. Thank you all for joining us once again as we dive into the ruins. If you are just tuning in for the very first time, Kelly and I post new videos every Thursday on our YouTube channel where we cover everything D&D, &D, including advice for players and guides for Dungeon Masters. So be sure to check us out over at youtube.com slash Dungeon Dudes. And you can also join us on Tuesday nights when we record the campaign live on Twitch. You can check us out from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube. And you can catch all of season one and catch up on season two, Shadows of Drakenheim, on a podcast as well, available at Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify. Yeah, and one of the things that we're very excited about, Kelly and I, is that we are making a book uh, based on season one of Drakenheim. So that is uh, that is going to be coming to Kickstarter later on this year. And in the meanwhile, meantime, these untold tales of Drakenheim are an opportunity for us to playtest some of the new material that we are developing to expand the world of Drakenheim for the for the book. Because while season one had lots of great adventures, there is lots more to the world of Drakenheim when you get to explore that with your very own characters. So we are so pleased tonight to have uh, Jill and uh, Alicia joining us to try out some of these new mechanics and try out some of these new places that we are going to be exploring as we develop the book. So be sure uh, be sure to head on over. Uh, you can visit drakenheim.com or just follow our, our socials and all that to get the latest news on when um, when the book is going to be coming out. We do have a mailing list at drakenheim.com if you want to sign up for some extra newsletters as we get closer to the date. So check that all, all out if it is of interest to you because uh, one day soon, you could be exploring Drakenheim with your own group uh, as well. So, <laughs> yay! <laughs> I can run my own. <laughs> yeah. So, in that, with that, let's head back to the ruins of Drakenheim. When last we left our heroes, um, our this ragtag little band of fourth level characters has <laughs> ventured together into the ruins of Drakenheim to assist Quinn with locating a ancient family relic for quinn comes from the other side of the world to the ruins of drakenheim to recover an important relic which could reveal the truth of her origins and where her destiny might lead her this relic was lost in an ancient in an old embassy in drakenheim but when our heroes went to investigate that embassy a group of thieves has got there first and absconded with the relic it seems though something terrible has happened to them because they seem to some of them appear to be affected by some sort of strange mutation or curse and the only one now who knows where the relic was buried has disappeared into the ruins once more our heroes have been investigating some leads that they found having discussed uh with the notorious um well notorious informant Blackjack Mel in Emberwood Village and having some strange go uh, encounters with a pair of bacon boys who offered to buy a pig that our heroes found in the ruins, a pig by the name of Wilbur, who turns out that he's actually was used to be a halfling, 
but has now been permanently transfigured into a pig. Thus, our heroes now are uh, back, have rested uh, in Emberwood Village and, and are deciding on their next steps, having agreed to come up with a plan when they next meet these bacon boys who have offered to buy the pig. <laughs> <laughs> And we long rested, right? That was Yes, you have taken Yay! a long rest, regained all your spells, hit points, all that Ugh. good stuff. Let's do that now. But just to, to bear in mind, uh, Ori, you did gain a level of contamination in our last adventure. Contamination does not heal naturally and does not disappear when you take a long rest. In fact, it can get worse. So I would like you to roll me a, uh, a constitution saving throw, please. Uh, oh, uh, I just don't have advantage. Do I have disadvantage on them? Nope. No disadvantage. No okay. advantage. That's all. Okay. Uh, Constitution 18. Okay. So your contamination does not get worse. Uh, uh, good. <laughs> we don't need this. Right. Um, one thing that you do know, Ori, is, is that... Um, the local flame keeper of the chapel in Emberwood Village does know a ritual that can purge contamination for your body, but it can lay you out for several days after having that happen to you. It is not pleasant. Mm. So probably not. <laughs> gonna <laughs> throw this off while I'm with you. Does Ori look? Does she look like she's getting sick yet? With um, with contamination level one not too much yet she okay. um at contamination level one ori looks like she had a really bad sleep last night and oh. could probably use a shower and a massage um Couldn't maybe when you woke maybe <laughs> when you woke up ori you might have noticed that like one of your fingernails was starting to fall off or like a bit of hair f uh, like fell out um and you definitely have like a minor headache but it, but right now, it's manageable. Feels like <coughs> got a cold I, coming on. Yeah, weird stuff's happening to me. Or yeah. you should really uh, look into some of the dwarven masseuses that we have. They're excellent, and they 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 really use their elbows, you know. And I'm saying oh. this as I'm uh, I'm also I'm holding Wilbur and I'm feeding him applesauce in the morning. <laughs> it's breakfast time for Wilbur. Come on, Wilbur. <laughs> Did you guys sleep okay last night? I stayed really? up a little bit. I looked at the stars as I often do, but then I slept like a baby. I How did I you did too. sleep? It's kind of the best sleep I think I've had in this whole adventure so far. But you know what I could really go for? What? A hearty bowl of porridge, two fresh fowl eggs, and a thick crispy slab of bacon. Well, now my tongue is rumbling. Where's the pig? Where's the pig? I was just feeding him applesauce. Oh, okay. Sorry. I uh, might avoid the bacon right? for now because you never know if it comes from where the bacon came from. With with turned him into a pig. Sorry, right. Um, fortunately, a good bowl of porridge is not outside the question. Um, as 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 Ori and many others know, it, um. The contamination that infuses Drakenheim has meant that almost all the farms and villages for about a week's out travel of Drakenheim are abandoned. So almost everything that comes into the city as supplies is salted or preserved in some way, shape, or form. It's very hard to get fresh food out here. I wonder if they're serving anything downstairs. <laughs> we should go they check. They certainly are. It's, uh, um, I, b I believe uh, the, the group you've actually managed to stay with uh, 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 several peasants in, in a cottage. Um, me, me, unless you're able to afford the, the, the noble's manor, um, most folks usually end up betting with some of the locals, um, which is easy enough. And usually, you know, a, a breakfast of some porridge and maybe a handful of eggs uh, is completely not out of the question, um, but a but uh, getting getting meat is basically the the folks you're staying with are like, well, we could butcher the pig. <laughs> Wilbur, no, oh, so we need him as our bargaining tool. Oh right, that. that's right. We need him for Leon. 
We're not and, done with freaking frack outside out there. And for Rufus, he's my new best friend. Um, <laughs> I can't. I love this pick. Okay. So, with with that, the the group of you have agreed to meet these butchers boys again. But what's your plan from there? What do you guys think? How do we go about this? We're trying to find Leon. Leon yes. was your mixed father? up. No. No, Leon has your relic. And he's the Leon. only person who knows where it's buried. But he was hanging out with all these people that were either dead or turning into pigs. Which means that they must have been eating this contaminated meat which seems to be linked to the the bacon boys who say that they would bring us back to our to to their father. Yeah. Uh, that... Good assessment, Rufus. You must have slept in a Holiday Inn Express last night. Oh, I also take notes. It's a very <laughs> good thing to do. I, right, I write so... I write it all down and then I try to remember what it means. Right now the only thing well the only thing we know is that Leon went into the ruins, but we don't know where. And the only connection we have to these pigs and to Leon is mm -hmm. this butcher that they went to. So we're going to the butcher, aren't we? I think. With Wilbur. I mean, maybe he might have gone back to the butcher and he might know something. And he might have had your relic or known something about it. It yeah. doesn't hurt to ask. A little jaunt into Drakenheim never hurt anybody. If not, we're going into the ruins without knowing where we're going. Unless we can come across someone who knows more about them, but that's taking a yeah. chance here in Drakenheim. The stars will guide us once they're out, I suppose. Um, so we'll be fine. All we have to do is follow the stars. And actually, as we're having this discussion, I'm going to cast aid on all of us again. Oh. Giving us all five extra hit points nice. to our maximum. Uh, nice. Very, Definitely very neat. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, as you as you set up to prepare, um, every every morning in Drakenheim, every morning in Emberwood Village, several caravans and new travelers usually arrive through the city. Um, one of the most striking ones that you see is a group of about 30 common folk. Most of them in threadbare clothing, many of them with shaven heads, um, and um, several packs of, of things. And many of them are clutching holy symbols. Um, and they're all being led by this, this curious man with a thick, bushy mustache who's kind of leading them around like a camp counselor, um, encouraging them to say, and saying, all right, now everybody, we're going to be heading into the ruins towards the crater. It's going to be really dangerous, but I know you're all going to be okay as long as you stay together. <laughs> oh, um, I'm supposed to be on that one. I'll, you, I'll, I'll, I'll catch the next sure one. Sure, we're on that next one. Next one. <laughs> I'll it's, catch like, it. I'm sure the, it's like a ride. It just keeps coming around and around. Okay, well, good, good. I just don't want to miss out. It sounds like they're going to, mm. to, to talk to Lucretia Matthias and perform the sacrament. That's what I came here to do. Really? Mm. I really I didn't know what you came here to do. I was just happy we bumped into you. Oh, I'm going to take a piece of delirium, this really dangerous crystal, and I'm going to jam it into my chest. And in doing so, I will be purified. Purified oh, or what? dead. Oh, no, no, no. Of course not. The stars <laughs> have guided me here. Anyway, I'm going to catch the next one. The delirium in the chest can wait. I'm here to help you too. The stars have told me to do so. And so it is my duty to help you in your quest. And then I will have a pure soul ready to accept the sacrament. Are you sure, Rufus? I am at least 76% sure. <laughs> okay, that sounds good enough for me. I'll take it. You worry, you'll take it too. Uh, are we are we just going to follow these bacon boys and give them the pig and or are we going to like try to to stealth with uh, like hide and I'm not very good at hiding but I don't know what what do you guys think our plan is what what should we do I was thinking we're going to use subterfuge even though I'm not really sure how to do that I like the way the word sounds coming out of my mouth 
So <laughs> it sounded we meet. good. <laughs> Thanks. I'm, I'm practicing. Tense. Thanks. So we, we follow the boys. We get them to lead us back to their their dad. What's the dad's name? Did you take a note, Rufus? Butcher. Mm. The, the, okay. butcher. The, the boys just called him Papa. Call him Papa. I know. <laughs> so we go back to Papa. Papa will, will have to remember Leon. Because Ori, do you, do you know anything about the way Leon looks or any of that? Or is, you're just the, you're just... He's not, he, he's not underground enough for you. I've heard hmm. of him in a passing, but he wasn't one of my contacts. Wilbur would recognize him, though. <laughs> oh, Wilbur. This is why we need the pig. So, you know what? I think we should talk to them. And if we're going to give them the pig, they've got to take us back to their papa because we got to nego- We don't trust negotiating with them. We got to negotiate with the papa on how much That's the pig true. is worth. So That's they'll true. take us back. But we don't have to sell him the pig, I guess. We can just ask him for information. Yeah, maybe we can like pull something, some sort of some sort of trick or something where we say, if we find Leon, we'll bring you back the pig. And maybe by then we will have figured out how to turn Wilbur back into Wilbur the halfling and he won't get eaten. Turn him back, though, but then he won't be a cute pig anymore. I'm sorry, Rufus. Rufus. At the end of this, I'll buy you a pig. Oh, good. And I won't. That's the, I accept <laughs> that answer. You know what? I realized we should probably ask Wilbur how he's doing, or you're the only one that can talk to him. The rest of us will. Me I and can... him have been getting along just fine. Isn't that right, Wilbur? And I, I ruffle his hair that he has. <laughs> I can talk to him uh, once a long rest. <laughs> Unless I'm using a sp- oh, no, my magic. Really. Oh no, <laughs> so we should save it then. We, we should, should save it. We'll save it for, yeah, maybe we'll do it when we're there and I can hear what Wilbur has to say about this papa. You know, Dang. Wilbur, I want you to just oink like crazy if you see Leon or if there's, I don't know, something that we should be aware of, but I guess we won't understand because he'll just be oinking, but try. The, the pig grunts. <laughs> oh, um, good, no. good boy. Well, it's better than nothing. Um, not not too lit long into the morning, the butcher's boys arrive back in town, peddling their wares. Um, and uh, you notice as you as you approach that the people in Emberwood Village, that now that you've been in Emberwood Village for about a day, you're able to tell who are the new arrivals and who are the people that live in Emberwood Village. The people in Emberwood Village don't buy the Butcher Boys meat. (laughs) They almost entirely sell it to, like, um, several of the uh, the pilgrims that come through buy it, Mm -hmm. and some of the other adventurers and the bandits buy it. But you, you, from what, like, looking at the locals, none of the none of the people who actually live in Emberwood Village are buying this from them. I guess it will blow our cover if I tell those pilgrims not to buy the meat, so I suppose we'll have to let that slide? Well, yeah, well, actually, uh, how close are we to the pilgrims? Uh, um, you are as close or as far away as you'd like like to be. I'm just describing you the general scene of what, what you're seeing as you're spending time around. As, as we get close to them, I telepathically warn them... <laughs> About the bacon. Oh. Using my telepathy, I'm like, you don't want to touch that. <laughs> Keep going. Uh, um, and and as they walk away, the, the two of them said, Lucretia Matthias says that we should give up all, all worldly possessions. Maybe we should give up meat too. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, move along, move along, <laughs> move along. Um, and so. It's just as you're finishing it that you kind of turn around and there's one of these, these, it's like that shocking moment where you just kind of turn your shoulder and the butcher's boys are behind you and you're like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> and they just kind of immediately say, can we buy a pig? <laughs> uh, we will take this pig to Papa with you. It's a small pig. It's a small pig. I we can carry so. it. It's fine. It's a well-sized pig. No, it's it's about fifty pounder. You know, most of Dad's pigs are they're usually about two, three hundred pounds. It's a small what? one. 
We can carry it. It's okay. I think, uh, you know what? I think we were, we want to talk to your papa about getting the best deal that we can for this pig. Cause it's a mighty fine pig that we have here. And, and I think mm. we need to talk to the boss on this one. You yeah. want to get a good deal on a 50 pounder? Yeah. But this was ra- like, you know, grass raised, uh, vegan <laughs> diet. So it's a, you know. Oh, no. that sounds cool. Yeah. Give it's me a, a persuasion f- check. <laughs> <laughs> I have no charisma. <laughs> oh, natural twenty! Ooh, that never happens to me. <laughs> the, the 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 butcher's was eyes kind of light up and like, oh oh yeah, I heard something about them grass fed pigs. Sounds yeah. pretty good. Certified organic. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, um, vegan diet, uh, raised in grass raised. That all that stuff kind of you know crunchy. They're like uh, the and the the two of them say uh, to each other, "All right, well, you know, if, if you want to come back and talk to Pa, you know, that's that's it's all right. We you can you can come with us back. We're we just got to finish up some more sales and then we're heading back." Okay, okay, sounds good to me. You guys are good. Okay, hurry up. How long are they selling for? Like, are, do, are we just going to stand here all day and watch them? <laughs> no. Well, if you want to, if you want the best deal, you know, we we can't can't let the meat go to waste, right? I mean, I guess you could buy all the meat, and then we would be able to go back. Uh, how much for all the meat? Hundred gold. All right. All right. Sounds good. I yeah, don't know why my this. my my character sheet says I have two hundred and sixty five. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. <laughs> wow! You get a lot, so, so you now you now buy out their meat. Oh my god! You what bought, are we gonna do with this? We're going to get uh, <clears throat> we're going to get rid of it because it's contaminated, and we don't want anyone eating it. But how uh, are we gonna do that safely? Don't, don't, if we roast it, people are going to come out and think we're having a, a, a tailgate here. I buy it all, and I go and I put it in the room I was staying in before we go. <laughs> and I just leave it there, and it's going to be really bad. Oh my gosh, Rufus, I hope we didn't leave a security deposit. Uh, and I leave a note that says, please don't eat. <laughs> <laughs> the meat is taken care of, and nobody will be harmed. And now we can just go on our way. Okay. And like the, as I said, the, the 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 meat that the butcher's boys sell, yeah, very little of it is fresh meat. Almost everything that they're selling is smoked, salted, or uh, so things like bacon, sausages, cured hams, speck. It's processed stuff. Do you right? have any idea how hungry you're making me? Okay. <laughs> I mean, all of this cured. Delicious Jerky. meat. Yeah. I try hard not to eat it as I put it in my room. And I mean, I leave it there. The thing is, there's some really amazing smoked pork chops. Stop like, it. In my home, in, in, in my hometown, there's this there's this butcher that, that like sells these pork. They're like that thick. They're uh-huh. like smoked perfectly. They're so amazing. The, the butcher bros are also selling barbecue sauce as well. So they. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I'm going to pocket in my satchel some of the meat that we took from them just in case we run into like creatures that we can throw off with like old rotten meat. So Quinn put some of the meat Hmm. in her bag, like, but like she puts like, um, maybe she has a sense thing, like a little scent thing to keep it from smelling. I don't know. Well, as I said, the meat, the meat (laughs) smells amazing. It is not rotten and it's not going to rot for a very long time because of the preservatives that have been applied applied to it right like it it it, it, it's um this is the the, whoever is making this stuff knows their market right like they're they're making meat that is going to keep that is going to that is not going to just immediately start rotting and it's if it smells of anything Mm -hmm. it smells of wood smoke hickory rosemary and and um a apple little uh, applewood <laughs> applewood um and um some of it's been like honey smoked bacon um and like it's it's very high quality stuff whoever is making this is 
great. Like it is clearly a map. Yeah. Both yeah. Rufus and Kelly are starving. <laughs> <laughs> We'll make you a sandwich, Rufus, or something, maybe later. Rufus, we can come back for it if we find out how to turn ourselves back from pigs. And then we can have as much of it as we want. Very true. <laughs> Wilbur Good. right now is probably looking at us like, you know what? Screw all three of you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so. So we've we bought so you ready to go. Yeah, we all right. your meat. Let's go. All right, so you ready to go? All right. Yeah. All right. Okay, how do we one? get there? So they the, the two of them have this very sickly looking donkey that pulls their cart. Um the donkey kind of has like these weird boils coming out of its back. Um and its breath smells like death. Um its hair is fall, falling out in patches, but they hitch the wagon to it and they begin uh, bringing the now empty wagon because you brought bought all the meat. So literally, the only thing in the wagon is Wilbur. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is, and, is, is your donkey okay? Oh yeah, he's fine. Uh, all right. <laughs> Hop into the wagon. <laughs> yeah, might as well. You know, gets in. Mm. She gets her and she like gets into the wagon. Um, Ori, when you as you get into the wagon, give me a perception check. <laughs> Uh, 16 in the wagon on the ground built into the bottom of the wagon you see that there are several chains and there are um, looped holes that are drilled with the edge of a chain like just just like a a kind of an eye loop that has been drilled into the bottom of the wagon Mm -hmm. and there's a burlap bag that has some clubs some rope some chain and padlocks and you just kind of like you kind of brush it with your eye as you as you get into the in, in, into it like there's there's some pretty heavy like shackles that are in this cart can I, uh where are the the boys right now uh, one of the boys is leading the donkey on the wagon, and the other is walking from behind. Okay. Um, can I take the padlocks? I want to take the padlocks, just in case. Um, yes, you you could give me. You would have to be sneaky about it. So give me a stealth check. Sixteen. As you go to reach into the bag. There's more than just padlocks in there. There's a couple pairs of manacles. Huh. Uh, I telepathically tell the other two, <laughs> there's something fishy going on here. We better watch our backs. There's enough manacles and padlocks in here to lock up a pretty hefty pig, if you know what I mean. I, at this, because I can't respond i guess in my head i'm just going to go into action and i actually i'm walking beside the cart and i fall back to the one who's at the back and i start trying to distract him with conversation so i just like draw his attention to me and i'm and i just start asking him like so how long have you been in business how long have you been doing this uh selling of meat and 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 what's your process for for refining the meat and i'm going to try to like get him going and, and, oh, okay. So, so Hugo responds. Bruno's leading the cart, and Hugo says, "Oh, you know, uh, you know, we, Dad, Pa's been doing it for, for he, for since we were born, you know." And you know, how he, old are you? Oh, I'm I'm thirteen. Oh, you're very large for a thirteen-year-old. Uh, yeah, growth spurts, eh? Yeah, Pa says we're growing up quick. Hmm. And um, what's what? When's your birthday? <laughs> um, he he says that his his birthday, uh, it was, oh, uh, you know, I, I was I was born June twelfth. Well, I missed your birth. Happy birthday! And I and I start oh, reaching into you. my cloak and I like find like a 
a rock or something. And I'm like, here. I, and I'm like, yeah. So this whole thing is to try to like get his attention so that Ori can go like rifling through the bags and stuff in the back or whatever needs to happen up there. Yeah. Oh yeah so Quit. so Ori, what do you want to take out of the bags? Because it it's some pretty big hardware in there. But with your stealth check, you can at least take the locks. Okay. Can I use my thieves tools to break anything that could be manacled around wrists? You could, but it would probably take you at least a couple minutes to do mm -hmm. that, which would be much harder to evade notice. Okay, yeah. I'll with, probably with, just take the a... locks then. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Quinn leans toward Ori while uh, Rufus is having the distraction conversation. Is like, let's just remember this stuff is here in case we have to lock up some people, if you know what I mean. Also, let's help Rufus. He's dying up there. He just gave the guy a rock. They'll figure it out sooner or later. <laughs> hey, guys. Great, so great ride. The Butcher's Boys lead you to the west first. West of Emberwood Village um, they is actually not towards Drakenheim, which is north of the village. But they lead you along the river. Um, the, the, so there's the Ember Wash River, which is a small creek that runs into the Dran River, which is the river that um, runs out of Drakenheim. And where, and the, the way that they lead you is down um, Emberwash Creek towards the Dran River, where there is another bridge outside the city. They lead you across this bridge and then north back towards Drakenheim. So there, so again, you're going west and then north. Um, and so you spend a fair amount of time outside the countryside before they start leading you back towards the Haze and Drakenheim itself. And as they lead you into this, into the city, you enter into the city, uh, through, um, uh, through a, a part of the city known as Temple Road which is one of the five main highways leading into the city. And then through a region of the city that is known as the Sprawl, a ram a ramshackle slum um, known for seedy taverns and seedy tenement bu buildings. As you move through this area of the city, I'm going to have all of you roll me a d6. Six! Six! Okay. <laughs> oh, I hope he's even better than I would see. Come on. Four. Oh, that would be a one. Woo. Okay. So, um, there's a moment as you move through the city um, where you get a little bit turned around. And you feel, and it's, it's kind of hard to trace where you're moving through and where you're moving towards. But because you're moving with the butcher's boys, it's almost like the butcher's boys are like this stabilizing force. Like they're meant to be here and you're not. And we um, feel that. You feel it or yeah. they feel it because I don't feel anything. I'm, I rolled yeah. a one. <laughs> I don't know. I, I imagine that, like, as we're walking alongside them, suddenly I, like, have this weird moment where I, like, turn around and they're heading in the opposite direction I thought I was headed, but I still <laughs> see them. So I'm like, oh, I must have, I must have turned around. I don't remember mm -hmm. doing that. And then I, like, catch up and continue walking with the cart. Um, as you pass by, though, um, so as you pass, pass by, though, you do pass by a um another knocked over cart with a body splayed open from it and actually turning it over and investigating it um inside are actually two potions of healing Ooh. Ooh. uh who wants those do you guys you guys can take them i uh, do you, you two take them i'm 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 fine really? i i sure. mean i'm i'm a healer well, I'll, I'll be okay no you Okay, well, I mean, at least we have it. And if yeah, you have it I, I can, you can always, always toss one to me. Mm. 
Um, so, uh, an, an interesting bit, bit there. But, um, so, as you move through the sprawl, um, you pass across Shepherd's Road and into an area of the town known as Hogtown. Um, this part of the city was where all the farmers and shepherds would bring their livestock for preparation and sale in the market days inside the city. So the whole area around here is a lot of warehouses and stockyards surrounded by various buildings and slaughterhouses. Oh. And the boys lead you towards a, um, a single building in, in the area that is just a few streets back um so um a few streets back um there is you come across you, they lead you to sorry blah, 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 losing my words there <laughs> um let's just bring this up on screen so i can explain what you're seeing so <laughs> here we go and we will just zoom this on out so they bring you to a rather uh large two-story home and what you see here is there is this long uh, house building with several chimneys st stretching up for it. it's stone on the ground floor uh wooden and plaster on the second floor um and it's kind of an l-shaped building so there's the long part of the building here um that that is then sticking out and then there's a, just a second floor uh like so that rises up from it now fenced off around this house is a large stockyard and pig pen and there there is actually in fact a large contained corral over here mm -hmm. uh where inside are waiting several gigantic hairy pigs um beside there you see that there is this stone building with a shingled roof that um is right here and there's a chimney rising up of it that is there's a constant stream of smoke coming from the chimney and as you approach you can actually smell the smoking meat um, and then there's a large barn as well with its doors closed and a padlock on the front of the barn, do the barn doors. In the yard, um, attached to each attached to chains on a spike in the middle of the yard are three massive two-headed hounds. Hmm. Where I'm from, <laughs> hounds usually only have one head. This is curious. You can see from the yard that there is a front door right down over here. So there's a front door to the building right over here. And there is a pair of double doors that also lead into the main building over here as you approach from this, this direction. Is, is this home for you, boys? Yep. Would you mind if I go take a look at the pigs for a second? They're not for sale. Oh, I just want to see them. They look like great pigs. All right. And and the, 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 two boy, the, the, the two boys point to the front door, and they're like, that's the shop entrance there. You can go there, and, and Paul will be out to talk to you soon. Uh, before I go, I'm going to stomp over to this pen and lean up against the uh, the fence. And uh, I, I kind of lean over to one of the pigs and I just whisper and I go, Are you a person? The pig is glopping down on some sort of slop um, and grunts back at you um, as it continues to just devour into this mangy mess that as you kind of look at it it looks like it might be ground up rattling that the pig is eating 
Are you going to finish that? No, um... <laughs> was that a yes? I think... I think that was a yes. I'm trying the, the to... The pig just goes... Uh, grunts, <laughs> as it continues to eat the slop in front of it. I, I pull out my nocturnal and, like, reference the skies, but it's really hard to see. Hmm. Very confusing. And I, I come back to my friends, and I'm like, well... That was anything... The stars are invisible in Drakenheim. I cannot make them out. I cannot get any signs. I think these pigs might have been people. As you, the, the two boys bring the cart back around to the other side of the, um, the stockyard. Um, and as they do, so they, they, they bring the cart around to the other side of the stockyard and they enter it in here and they kind of park it back. One of them pets the two heads of the dogs, and they're like, good boy. And the and uh, Bruno calls out, Pa, we got customers. Should we head into the shop? Um, yeah, I think so. I mean, are, do, do your dogs bite? Are they, are they friendly? No. They like us. They're not going to like you, though. You better not come in the yard. They'll probably try to kill you, so just stay away, okay? Let's just stay hey. stay out of the yard. How about, um, you know, I really love pigs. I think I'm going to go see the pigs as well. And I go over to the pigs and I cast, well, I have my uh, speak with animals through my prim primal awareness um, that I cast. Okay. I say, and, 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 I am you people. <laughs> okay. As you begin to cast the spell, one of the butcher's boys is do, is starting to do his own work and he's coming over to the to the pigs and he's he says to you Those pigs aren't for sale. You should leave them alone. Well, I'm just looking. I'm admiring the amazing you know pork that you have right here. Yeah, I bet that's going to turn into some really tasty meat. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Pa's really good. He, he does good work. He's teaching us everything he knows. Wow. Um, and the, the, the butcher boy stays there. He's like, so what's your favorite kind of pork? Um, I think bacon. Oh, me too. Yeah. How, how? What's your What's your favorite kind of pig to cook? Oh, you know, I like these 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 ones. You know, they're they all kind of go together. I like the chops. Hmm. I mean, generally, any meat that comes off a pig is delicious, <laughs> but. Um, as you are talking uh, to the. To the, the, the boys. I'm going to have all of you roll me a d6. Five. I got a one. Come on, come on, come on. Six. What? Okay. In, the, in this moment, a man steps out the front door. He is a rippling mountain of a man whose chins have chins and muscles have muscles and flab. He must be at least eight feet tall. And where the body begins and the head be uh, starts is impossible to tell. There's basically no neck to this man. Um, and his, his arms are like tree trunks and his belly is like a barrel. He is wearing a blood-stained white jerkin and a heavy leather apron and a pair of breechers and he steps out from the, the the front door and says boy I see you want to buy something i got a lot of orders to fill so you want to talk business don't waste my time uh quinn would like to step forward and say oh you must be pa uh yes sir. my name is quinn Quinn. Name's Everett Lee. Lee and family butchers. 
here in Drakenheim for 82 years. Family owned. Finest meat you see this side of Westmar. Well, I, mean, I would say that you look amazing for 82. I'm not oh. 82, idiot. Oh. Oh. I, oh, well, you look good for, for whatever you My friends and I are here because we were very interested in finding out uh, what, what you had for sale. And also, we had something to offer. And we wanted to find out if you uh, might know somebody that we're sort of interested in looking for because we might be able to um, uh, offer you something in return. <laughs> That's a mouthful right there. All right. What do you want to talk about first? Come on uh, into the shop. Oh, uh, well, okay, we have to go um, on the fence with the dogs. Nah, you don't have to. Don't worry. They'll, they, usually they tear people apart in about a minute. They, it don't last too long. You just stay out of the yard, you hear? And you stay away from my pigs. Who, me? Uh-huh. You know, there's all kind of sickness going about. Humans and animals. You go up to my pigs, you might be sick. I can't afford for my animals to get sick. You understand? Yeah. Yeah. Now you come on into the shop. Yes, oh, sir. Sir. Guess I'll be talking to the pigs later, guys. I, yeah. I I march right towards the door and just happily wander into the shop. I clutch my uh, hammer tighter and just walk right in. I walk okay. in right behind being like, all right, I'm not scared of this guy. I'm not scared of this guy. <laughs> He's creepy. Why is he so big? Why are those pigs over there? Why are you guys both visiting those pigs? I like pigs. I thought maybe we could discern something, but it was difficult. I was gonna okay, try to talk just to them, give me a I moment. Get a here. chance. Are they? Are they? Are they different kind of pigs? I noticed they're kind of big from over here. I mean, I Wilbur was a halfling, so maybe that's why he's a smaller pig. I'm wondering if these were humans or elves or dwarves. Okay, so this is the is the shop part here. Um, and as you walk, you can move your tokens in. in, in oh, I, I you probably can't see your tokens right now. I cannot. Because I I have <laughs> fog of war. It. I'm sorry. It's dark uh, in here. Yeah. Uh, it's it's not dark in the street as well, but I just don't want to reveal all the other rooms yet. So <laughs> should, probably should have thought about the reveal order a little bit more. So he leads you in, into the shop. There's two windows leading into this room and behind you is a pair of big, uh, as you come into the room, there's a big slab table uh, with actually a, a kind of a metal top and all about the table are twine and bits of butcher's paper. And in the room uh, hanging from several, um, uh, hanging from the rooftop are several sausages and other preserved meats and finished products. And behind you, there's a pair of saloon-style doors, and you can see somewhat into the the butcher's room beyond, where you can see that there's a big table behind you, uh, be behind the, these doors, with all arranging uh, of like butchery happening and a big meat grinder that's grinding out sausages. And Everett Lee comes in. Which of you is carrying the pig? <laughs> I have him in my arms. I'm cuddling him like a little baby. I'm petting him. Okay, there we go. So, uh, um, you're cuddling the, the, the pig like a little baby, and um, Everett Lee uh, says, All right, then. That's just a little babe. How much you want for him? Well, I mean, we actually don't want to sell the pig. Why are you wasting my time, then? Well, we have different business that we <clears throat> wanted to attend to. Uh, my boys say you bought the whole cart. You were interested in repeat business. Yes, we do. We actually have our own sort of... Uh, 
you know, sales business on the side where we sell, we sell, a, we have a, a truck, a, a sandwich truck. So we like mm. to pick up the best meats in Drakenheim and sell them in our truck in the park, even though there is no park. Oh. I also eat a lot. Oh. Yeah, that's true. Man and a, and after my it. heart. I'm out. Yeah. We're trying to, we're actually trying to cut a different kind of deal with you because there's someone that we're looking for that stole mm. some of our sandwiches. So we might be able to make a different kind of trade instead of a uh, money. Uh, yeah, a pig. If you can give us some of the information that we're looking for. Information? What kind of person you looking for? I don't see many folk come this way. You see the state of town recently? He says, and he smiles with a big toothy grin. All of his teeth are, sh like, sharp. That's interesting. Do you file those hey. things, or? Mm, I just find that, you know, you gotta have a good butcher's razor to enjoy the product firsthand. I am oh. greatly disturbed. <laughs> I... Rufus is greatly disturbed. <laughs> well, I, I don't know much about uh, about the meat business. My friends and I we just uh, started this for ourselves and been doing pretty good with it. But there's someone we're looking for, and we got information from somebody else that he came through here before he went somewhere else. So mm. might Does... you know a man by the name of... Uh... And she looks over at Orion Rufus. What's his name again? Leon. 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 He, he, he may have worn a, a, a patch on his outfit that was a... Uh, a, a... Uh, cl was it a club and pins? Pins and clubs. Pins and clubs. Yes. Pins and clubs. Ain't nobody come round buying from me in person in a couple weeks. Had a few trespassers, though. Tried to steal from the missus. Well, my puppies took good care of them, and the pigs ate well that week. I mean, these guys weren't eating here. They were... N you know, Blew it. <laughs> died somewhere no. else, but <laughs> their leader, Leon, he might have come by. You might have seen him or maybe your boys. I don't ask questions when people come trespassing on my property. I just let Lola there do the talking. And he points to the axe that that uh that he produces from under the table that's a big axe it's a very big axe and you're a very big human you have a, a wife in here somewhere i thought i mentioned something you there you there's a female yeah in here. yep married now oh must be 22 some old years still happy Still got the spark. You know, he's a human I as like well. To, I like to say that couples need a project together and running a business and raising two young boys. Well, that's a good project for two couples, I'd say. For well, a couple, I'd say. I'm so glad that the stars have aligned for you. It, it seems just, just great. And you seem very happy here, but... Unfortunately, it seems that there's been a confusion. We we were under the impression that this Leon character, who has many of our sandwiches, he, him and his friends were sick, and he came. He 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 was reported as possibly coming to see you. In the past while, so I don't really know what what sort of trail we're on and perhaps we've made a mistake <laughs> he, he smiled and said if anyone come trespassing on my property and they do I feed them to the pigs I need to talk with my uh, partners for a quick second if you excuse me she turns around uh, I turns think around you and... all better leave now if you ain't here to sell me that 
pig or buy any of my product. I don't think we got anything else to talk about. You know what I mean? Uh, well, we ha- that that deal isn't quite off the table. I just wanted to make sure that uh, we were all thinking about the same product we wanted to possibly get from you. Give me a ten second. I'll Quinn give you five to- gold for the runt. That's twice as much as he's worth. I'll barely out, ba- barely get a rasher of bacon out of a mill. Barely, ba- I'll barely get bacon bits out of that one. But they'll be the best bacon bits you ever sold. Trust me. You'll have more repeat customers than you would have without them. This is well, a well, pure... Uh, hold All on right. one second. You think it over. You just ring, come ringing, and he picks up the axe, smashes through the back, the back door, and, and says, Ma! Ma! How's lunch coming? And you just see it, and you hear another voice go, Oh, you, uh, you, and you, 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 there's general hustle and bustle in the back room. You guys, do you think maybe he turned Leon into one of those things outside? I mean, I don't, we don't have any other leads, and he doesn't, I don't know where else to go. Leon Rufus, was reported. He was definitely, you get the sense that he wasn't being f- honest with you. Mm-hmm. I have a very high insight and I'm a good judge of character. And this large, large, large man is also a liar. And there is something fishy happening at, what She's should I sausage-y. say? Something, so- yes. <laughs> Took right. the words right out of yeah, my right. mouth. Mm-hmm. Well, here's the thing. He, if Leon came through and Leon was an untrustworthy looking type, he either fed Leon to these boys, which means maybe it's inside one of these things outside, or he turned Leon into, into one of those things. I just have a hunch. I don't know. I just think those pickups have looked really weird. I don't know why you guys are so comfortable going near them. Comfortable isn't the right word. Curious, maybe. No, that's true. What? Uh, Wilbur might have been here before. Should we, should we see if he knows anything? At this point, yes, because that guy's going to come back to that door and and feed us to the, the three headed dogs outside if we don't figure out what we're doing. All right. Um. So I'm going to cast speak with animals to talk to Wilbur. Okay. Wilbur says, "You're not gonna, you're not gonna sell me to that man, are you?" Please don't sell me to that man. No, 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 no. <laughs> what? I mean, if anything, Rufus is going to keep you as a pet, so don't worry about that. Um, but you were here before, weren't you? No, I've never been here. No. How about Leon? Leon was the one that bought the bought the that brought the meat for us. And did he say he bought it here, or did he say he bought it somewhere else? He did. Who else sells meat? Uh-oh. Um. Oh boy! Uh, ask him if okay. What were what was the last known? The only thing that you can see, s- say is that the packaging on the meat that was in that butcher shop is the same as the packaging that you found in the meat on the bandits before. Mm. All right. Uh, um. Well. Uh, Here's the thing. Oh, Wait. Yes. Yeah. Will and Wilbur says, <laughs> it, <laughs> it, it, look, "It looks exactly like the meat that we bought bef- that we were eating before." It hey, Wilbur, you want to go talk to some other pigs? <laughs> maybe you can drop them off and have a conversation. No, maybe they might eat him. No, I mean, if we take him outside the fence, you might be able to chat him up while we're distracting the boys. All right, or I tell you what, why don't we? I, what if? What if the two of us ring the bell, stay here, and Ori, you go out with Wilbur? And maybe if you can't get anything from the pigs, we'll try to get... We'll, we'll try to... I don't know. You might need to snoop around a bit. If I can't get we, anything from the pig, I'll bring Wilbur back and I'll take a look around. There's a building... There's A couple of the buildings... Don't involve going into the property to perhaps look through a window. Mm-hmm. Maybe gather some information. So if you can do that, the two of us, me and Quinn, Quinn mm-hmm. and I, yes. can perhaps 
um, distract the the butcher long enough to we give may you... need to put, we may need to put him to sleep well it just so happens <laughs> I can use space magic to do that all right I only have 10 minutes it's before a plan. I can talk to pigs anymore I'm gonna head out okay and I okay. Okay, take and Wilbur as, outside and as she heads out I ring the bell for uh, the butcher to come back he bursts back through all right I'm about done with you all Why? what is it oh uh, well we like what you have we actually are um having our pig uh, meet your pig to see if uh he likes him. If he likes him, and I'm sure he will, then we'll, we'll be buying, trust me, a hundred gold of your meat. Them pigs out there are all going to be bacon in What do you week. mean? That's my stockyard. That's Why my you- meat. Well, I've heard some people say that they haven't felt very good after eating your meat. I'm just wondering about the quality. Is this- That's hogwash. Probably just eating too many of it, getting the meat sweats. Bro, oh, I know What's about the, the meat sweats. <laughs> what is the meat sweats? This is something oh, I'm the learning meat sweats. here today. The meat sweats is when you eat so much meat that your belly is about to burst and your head is all damp from sweat from the amount of meat. that It happens to me once a day at least. Oh, this is, we're starting to try good. Um, so I noticed out back there you have a... a a smokehouse, because you know Rufus here is very interested in how meat is produced. Because you know, when we're selling, a lot of times our customers like to know how we, uh, how, how the, where the meat comes mm. from, the product they're eating. So, can you tell us a little about that smokehouse you have in back there? Maybe you'd like a personal tour. Yes. How about a free sample on the house? I just ate. Any? He... Oh, now come on. I made this myself with the sweat of my own two hands. And he takes one of the sausages and like his fingers are the size of the sausages. Like, so it's this huge sausage that he pulls down. But like compared to him, the sausage is like a snack and he tosses it in his mouth and eats. So it's good. It's good. Old family recipe. And as he's eating, like the meat is like between his teeth. <laughs> Very, I would I would love to take you up on the free tour if that's something that you're offering. I'd love to see where you're where you're I'm I'm a butcher my in training. I'm a practicing butcher. Yeah, I don't can. believe that as far as I could throw you, but uh, now tr- then again, I could probably throw you pretty far, although I hear you're not supposed to toss dwarves. No. In no. any case. <laughs> no, I am quite hefty for a dwarf. I'm four foot three. Thank you very much. He's a big one. He's a big boy. Mm. Large right. Well, why don't baby. you come round and I'll show you the smokehouse. You know, uh, right. I do have a recommendation there, sir. If you are offering these uh, free tours and engaging with your people, you might try to sound less ominous when you're doing it. But yes, I'd be delighted to take you up on this tour. I've All wanted right. to see a, a butcher shop for some time. I'm very excited. Meanwhile, Ori, what are you doing? I am taking Wilbur towards... I'm like, doo, 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 just coming down this path, like... Trying to look like I'm not doing anything, but slowly uh, trying to bring Wilbur closer so that way he can talk to the pigs. All right, make a stealth check. 16. Cool. You hear one of the, the butcher's boys is in is in the yard um, and um, is locking up one locking up the barn and is walking back into the house. So the two the, the butcher's boys have gone back into the main house. And so you head over to where the the other pigs are, and Wilbur goes up. What do you want to have Wilbur say to the other pigs? Wilbur, ask them if any of them are previous halflings, humans, dwarves, the works. Wilbur oinks over to the other pigs, <laughs> and there's the the other pigs kind of oink back and and gruffly, and then there's a there's a moment where you see 
a tear run down the cheek of one of the pigs. And Wilbur turns back to you and he's like, Uh, I think it's all of the above. Do they all come from different places? They say most of them can't remember. They're starting to forget. They're starting to forget who they were. Ori, I'm starting to forget who I was. You're Wilbur! You're a halfling like me! <laughs> I'll keep reminding you when I speak to you. Um, um, ask him, um, are any of them Leon? No, none of them are Leon. Oh, no. All right, well, at least we know that something weird is going on here. Um... Ask him, uh, what should we be worried about around here? They just say... They just say... They don't want to go downstairs. Downstairs? Another one says, don't go into the barn. The barn? Oh, oh man. Alright. Be we better go warn our, warn our friends. Come on, Wilbur! And we try to dash back towards the... <laughs> The house. All right. As you dash back towards the house, they come out the front door, and the the butcher says, "So you want to see how you smoke the meat, then, eh?" Oh yes, I'd love to see how you smoke yeah. the meat. I'd love to see and your barn saying, if you have it downstairs. Now we now he said, "In our family, the meat smoking's gone on for a long time. Now my granddaddy started using hickory, but others said oak. Some people try using the charcoal, but you know it's harder and harder to come by that these days. And the charcoal just don't do as good as the wood, though. And now, of course, you got to make sure that. And, and and he like goes into exhausting detail, starting to explain to you. I'm taking and, notes. And, and he he opens a part of the gate gate of the fence." And the dogs immediately start barking at you, and he says, "Shut up, you mangy mutts!" And he he brings you around uh, to the to the smokehouse. Uh, where and and Ori and Quinn, where are the two the two of you going to be during all this? Um, Quinn actually walks over to Ori and says, "Anything from Wilbur? Do Wilbur uh, find anything?" Totally. Uh, and so I'm kind of walking up the path, like shuffling up the path towards the door. And I say, um, big problem. Those are all not pig pigs like Ugh. Wilbur. And we're not supposed to go in the barn or the basement. Where's barn, Rufus? The basement. He's, he's stalling big man. Papa, he's stalling him. He's talking about a smoked meat. Okay, so he so, offered us so a sample. Rufus... So the, the two of you are talking in the street, basically, as Rufus goes into the yard with uh, with Everett Lee. Everett Lee goes up to the smokehouse and he takes out a key from his keychain, unlocks the padlock on the smokehouse and says, now you got to keep it locked real careful, like, oh, oh, otherwise the thieves get in and get the merchandise. And he opens the door oh. and says, well, go on in and have a look. I can't see anything bad coming from this, and I walk in. He slams the door behind you. <laughs> Wait a minute. You guys can roll for initiative if you want to. Because uh, he slams the lock on the door. I don't know why I did that. Rufus is just a very trusting person. Okay? I should have said he was big and plump. <laughs> God. Oh, there's a good initiative roll. Five. This might be the stupidest thing I ever do, but it's Rufus. The 16th. <laughs> I got a zero for initiative. What? How? I, I have a minus oh. one initiative and I rolled a one. Oh my god. Okay, that is awesome. So, and Rufus, you got a, a zero. Five. Five. Quinn, what do you, do you have? <laughs> and, 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 uh, and, Ori, what did you get? 16. Okay. Um, so because Rufus was so trusting, um, I'm going to give Lee a surprise round where he, ba where, and his surprise round is basically, he slams the door shut on Rufus and puts, and closes the padlock. Um, and so, um, with that, uh, Ori, you hear the door slam and, um, see Everett Lee, um, turning away from, from the door from the, the smokehouse. Um, 
And I'm assuming there's no windows on the smokehouse. No, there's there there's a chimney on it, but there's no there's no windows. Okay. Um I am going to um where am I? I was here. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna hop the fence. <laughs> <laughs> and oh gosh. And kind of, I wanna try to sneak around the opposite way in which Everett is going. Okay. Go around here. So you're gonna hop the fence. Uh, uh, um, Everett uh, has uh, has his a- axe in his hand, <laughs> um, and he's um, you, you. He's heading back towards the house. What's the lighting like? Uh, mm-hmm. It's daylight. It's overcast, but it's daylight. Okay. Um, and as you come into the yard, Ori, the dogs are off their chains. Oh. And do they see me? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. They they've been they've been watching this whole thing with hungry eyes. Uh, can I? How tall is this smokehouse? <laughs> Uh, the the smokehouse itself uh, is it's a squat building. It's only about eight feet high within the roof that go, goes up up to it, and just the chimney. I guess what I'm gonna do is I'm going to dash. Cl- Can I dash climb onto the top of this thing? Yes. You do you have you don't have a climb speed though, so you'd climb up at ha- at half your normal movement. So give me an athletics check. Can I give you an acrobatics? <laughs> Uh, 12. 12, you manage, uh, you, you dash up and clamber onto the rooftop. Okay. Um, and I, like, I kind of want to be down, so that way Everett, like, I'm kind of on the roof watching Everett walk into the house. Uh, if you want to, from the rooftop, you could hide. Oh, perfect. Um, yeah. Well, can okay. Can you, but can you do that as a bonus action? Because no, because, uh, yeah. Yes, if it's lightly obscured. Um, I'm going to allow it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So then my cloak just like covers me <laughs> and I look like I'm part of the roof. <laughs> okay. Um, you, uh, um, see Everett Lee, um, turn back around, uh, turn back around and he's, uh, um, and, uh, Quinn, you were, you were in the street. So I'm just going to move your token back out over here. Um, mm-hmm. and, Everett Lee turns to you, Quinn, and says, Now, this is your last chance to walk. You understand? You, open that door right now and let me in or let him out. One of the two. You have two you're welcome to, to go in, but you're not coming out. What goes on in that house, in that smoke house? You're about to find out. Okay. Um, and it's um, and so he he takes his axe into into his hands, and he hold, holds it out, and he's like, "You step over that fence, and I'll show you firsthand." <laughs> so he's holding his axe, readied if you come any closer. Queen goes. These are the kind of games I like to play. And she picks up her, her hammer and is like, ha! So. It is your turn. I, yes, it is. I'm going to, did I see uh, Ori climb the roof? Did I, I, did yes, I walk yeah, through it? From your, on your side, you can see her. Okay, so I know that she's safe already. Yeah. So I'm gonna wanna, I'm gonna have to take him down. First thing, I'm, how far away, he's right in front of me, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm going to pick up my uh, my warhammer, my hammer of the damned, and she's going to st- rage first, of course. I keep forgetting. She's a rage. So that means I have to swing on the wild magic table. Let's see, wild sword. Here we go. <laughs> That would be a six Ooh, on the wild let's search see. table. 
Okay, Path of the Wild Magic. So six. Until your rage ends, you are surrounded by multicolored protective light, and you get a plus one bonus to AC. And while allies are within 10 feet of you, they also gain this bonus. Ooh. Who's, who's within 10 feet of me? Is, is Ori too far away? Uh, not, right cur- not right now, but currently you got that plus one bonus to your AC. Okay. So Quint just goes, ah, this is just the kind of party that I've been waiting for. And her eyes start flashing and her hair starts glowing and her eyes actually turn like reddish yellow because it belies nice. her true. And she's gonna swing. Here we go. <laughs> Ooh, this All fun. right, so you leap over the fence towards Ever- Everett Lee to attack yes! in melee. Okay. Yeah! <laughs> and does a 24 hit? The 24 does hit. But as you run in, Everett Lee's ready for you. He readied his action, so he's going to attack you as well, uh, getting a critical hit at, on you. So you hit him, so the two of you basically slam your weapons right into each other. Uh, roll damage. Okay, um, damage on me is bludgeoning damage. It's going to be nine bludgeoning damage, but I think I'm also going to attack using my can i use a sneak attack or no since it's um uh yeah we said te- technically you can't because you're using you're not using a finesse weapon but yeah. we, we're allowing this for the the one shot yeah okay so that was a what did i say that was uh nine plus the sneak attack okay let's see keeping the numbers straight let's see Ooh, nine plus six okay so 15. yes and as your hammer smashes into Everett Lee's with a meaty smash, he takes the axe back in one hand, slashes it acro- across you for 20 points of slashing damage. Oh, you can add two points to mine because I was raging. So you get two plus two, so it's 17. With 17? 20 back at you. Okay. <laughs> um, and he smashes back. back um, and as the weapon digs into you uh, there's almost this bite like you you feel this sickly energy emanate off of it um you can't regain hit points now that you've been damaged by this weapon until the start of until the end of everett lee's next turn she's like she feels that coming through and she's like <sighs> And what is he doing? Is he just sort of looking at me like, come at me, bro? Um, He's looking at you like a butcher ready to carve up his meat. You. It is not a pleasant expression. It isn't. How far am I from the doorway that Rufus is locked in? Uh, you're 10 feet away. Um, how much movement do you have? 35 feet. Okay, so you could get within five feet of it, but you're not close enough to open it because the door is also locked. I'd have to like, because I wanted to like reach it and like whatever. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. you know what? She's gonna have to attack again. Oh no. All right. <laughs> um, The dogs. What? Use me. <laughs> they see Alrighty. me. They, they, oh yeah, they can see you. So the okay. two of the dogs are close enough to run right up to you. Mm-hmm. Um, and another they'll will have to dash and it's going to dash and get and circle around behind you um and each of the dogs with their two heads make two bite attacks um the first one getting an 18 and a six the second one getting a 14 and an 11. so it's 18 plus my armor class is 18 wait but i have plus to my armor class, I have because of stuff. I have plus no, that's it. So my armor class is eighteen. Okay, so, so I is you that including the, the extra one. plus one? Yeah, from no. the uh, wild magic search. Okay, so all Ooh. my attacks miss. <laughs> so the dogs <laughs> reach out at you, but the wild magic actually flares to life and protects you. So all their attacks miss. I'm afraid. What? <laughs> Six attacks. Not a single one gets through. <gasps> Stay with back, that, you abominations! With Sorry. that, we go to Rufus. Uh, what's <laughs> happening with Rufus? So Rufus is asked. He's he's said he's told to go check it out. He walks into this room. The door closes. I have dark vision. What what am I seeing in this? There's, room? You're seeing smoking meat on racks. 
that is in here. There's a f- there's a fire that is smoking the meat. Uh, it's it's kept it's kept at a, the temperature in the in this room is uh, like an oven at low heat. So it's you definitely wouldn't want to stay here for very long. It's hard to breathe the air in, even though it smells nice. Um, but you're not in immediate danger death. Like people can go in here to maintain it. It it's keeping the room smoky, mm-hmm. but not. Like, you would not want to stay here for hours on end, but in the short term, you're fine. And there's, uh, the door's slammed and locked behind me. There's no window yeah. on the door. There's no, like, there's little no win. Hatch. There's no windows. No. Hmm. Yeah, well, but you heard the click of the lock. I probably should have seen this coming. You know, they always told me, Rufus, you're too trusting. And I trusted them on that. Um, Rufus is going to, he's kind of fiddling around in his cloak and he pulls out his, um, his holy symbol, which is a crescent moon medallion that he wears around his neck. And he kind of looks around. He's like, "Mm, could use some starlight in here. And he's going to use this channel divinity twilight sanctuary. It doesn't say anything about being blocked by walls or anything. So a 30 foot radius of twilight emanates from around me and it's going to move with me and it lasts one minute and whenever a creature including me ends its turn in the sphere i can grant it either 1d6 plus four temporary hit points or i can end a charmed or frightened condition on it and because of my magic item i get to use that once without even using my channel divinity option Um, because i have the amulet of the devout so i hold up my my holy symbol and this kind of dome of twilight appears 30 feet from me and now both of my allies can be can gain temporary hit points every round if they would like yeah i'm saving you guys i'm just going to be a healing machine Awesome. I mean, get me out if you can, but at least I can heal you. <laughs> All right. We go back to the top of the round with Ori. All right. So I'm on the roof and essentially I'm like, oh my gosh, Rufus. And I want to like kind of swing down with like my legs still on the roof, use my thieves tools and try to unlock the lock. All right. Give me a uh, check with your thieves tools. This is a dexterity check plus your proficiency modifier. Um, 22. <laughs> the lock snaps open and uh, Rufus will be able to, you, you can uh, uh, open the door normally for Ruf- Rufus. Okay. Um, I telepathically say, Rufus, you're unlocked. And I swing back up on the roof. Um, and let me just see, I guess. Yeah, um, opening the door is an action. So you, so that you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um and I want to cast is a bonus action uh hunter's mark on Everett. Alrighty. Sounds good to me. And I wait up on the roof. Okay. Everett Lee takes his axe in two hands. He says, oh, well, I was never one for doing the things the easy way Pop always said. So he takes his axe in his in his hands, swinging recklessly. He brings the the axe uh, down upon you, Quinn, Mm -hmm. uh, getting a 20 to hit. Ew, yes. Uh, and that is going to be ooh, 18 points of slashing damage. Do I have resistance to slashing? Y- uh, if you are raging, yes, you do. So yes. that would be half, half damage. And Ori, don't forget your temporary hit points. How much? Oh, that's right. 1d6 plus 4. At the end of your turn, you'll get them as well, Quinn. Oh, at the mm-hmm. end of my turn, I get yeah. them? So wait, 1D6 yeah. plus okay. Four. If you end your turn within 30 feet of me, you get 1d6 plus 4 temporary hit points, and you can replenish them every turn 
when you end he, your turn within 30 feet of me. He swings the axe upward, um, <sighs> though, and, and it kind of catches you almost uh, uh, and starts to lift you off your feet. Give me a strength saving throw. <sighs> oh, do I get advantage on these or not? Yes, you I do. I don't know, maybe. One, two, four. 15. Alrighty, you are not pushed and knock prone. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, but you know what? Um, what? He is, uh, yeah, he's going to hold this position. He's 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 happy with this. You hear, you hear him just come out, boys, boys, get out here. Papa needs ya. <laughs> so is Rufus unlocked now or is he still locked Rufus in is there? Un- Rufus is unlocked. Quinn, it is okay. your turn. Perfect. Okay, so she's, um, uh, Quinn is going to yell. I don't know if yelling is like an action or a bonus action or reaction or whatever, but she wants to yell towards, um, Ori. She's like, I'm going to try to get one of them in there and lock it. Or if we can get them, get one of them in there and lock the door behind them because she has a special item she wants to use. (gasps) So let me see where everybody is. I see him. I see the smokehouse. Okay. I have to get him incapacitated. Okay, so she's still raging. And I would like to, first, as a bonus action, I would like to daunting roar. Everybody should be scared. She All turns right. around and her hair whips in like slow motion, like it's caught in the air and the wind, and she goes Roar! and roars. What's the saving which, throw, DC? <laughs> 13. All I right. become frightened of me, which means they're in disadvantage. Everett Lee succeeds the save, but the dogs all fail. Woof, woof. Okay. So now she's going to attack. All righty. Who are you going to attack? <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Twelve. To hit? Uh, I'm afraid that the twelve to hit bounces right off Everett Lee. <laughs> she was just a little, she was a little, like, crazed and, like, yeah. excited and reckless, and so she swung, and it, it was it, just a the, little bit The hammer literally bounces off his belly. <laughs> And his belly goes, and she goes, have fun. (laughs) Uh, Anything else, Quinn? Um, At that, I'm going to move. Let me see where I am. She's going to move. Well, she can't move away because of opportunity, so never mind. (laughs) Alrighty. The doggos. Um, The the dogs are going to hold their position and and keep surrounding you. Um, but are they frightened? Uh, oh yeah, they are frightened. That's correct. Um, do they have to run away? As they're they're not they're they're just. Let me find out. Let me find out if it if it, if it means the bonus has one creature of choice within ten feet. The hearing must succeed in wisdom thirteen or become frightened of me until the end of my turn. No, they don't. They just are frightened. So that's just advantage. Okay, that's all. so they um they have a ton of attacks, which now they all they're they're still going to try to fight, oh, um, but they all make their attacks with disadvantage. Okay. Um, so let's see if I get anything. So the first one, I get nothing. Oh, nope. That's not going to do it either. I'm going to do my 1d6 plus four, right? Oh, six. I Ten. do get one that I rolled an 18 and a 14 on their die, but with their plus four to hit, that's still only a 22. That turns the 22 into an 18 which still misses so with your terrifying roar the 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 dogs are so intimidated of you they can't get a good a good hit in um so with that we go to rufus uh rufus not completely aware of what's going on finishes up his notes on <laughs> the smokehouse and it's like okay so this is what a smokehouse looks like it, it looks very good <laughs> and he turns around and he opens the door and walks out to see all of this horrible commotion. Um, and he's like, oh! Um, and he is going to... Is it? You said it was an action to open the door? Uh, now that it's unlocked, it's just interaction. It's okay. unlocking the door that is an action. 
Okay, yeah. so can I like swing the door open and actually stay in there, but with the door yeah. open? Yep. Awesome. And then I'm going to cast Moonbeam. And I'm going to cast it so that it gets at least uh, the uh, Everett and one of the dogs in there. Okay, great. So in that case, I will just drop down something here for us. I hold up my holy symbol and like you can see the moon shining and shimmering. And then likewise, the moon appears in the sky through a crack in the clouds and it shines the light down. So yeah, like you would say there? Uh, is it 10 foot? Ra- like it, it's 10 foot radius. So it's is it that or is it the smaller one? Uh, five foot radius. So okay, it's 10 so it feet across, uh, yeah. 40 foot high. And yeah, I want to do there so that I can actually also okay. walk out. Okay. And um, do I have any bonus action? Hmm. Don't think I do right now. Oh, cool. I'm going to roll my own hit points because I'm in 30 feet of me. So I'm going to gain eight temporary hit points. And that is my turn. Nice. Very good turn, I would say. Um, so at the start of the round, you hear the um, the the back door of the building is opening up. Um and so the bu- and the butcher's boys burst through the back door um and as they burst through the back door into the into the yard um both of them are carrying crossbows <laughs> and they shoot the crossbows at ori <laughs> um but i roll a pair of fives and get <laughs> 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 uh, which is not even yeah which which goes completely <laughs> wide uh, uh on that so they they come out with their crossbows they shoot them and they're like papa we're gonna help <laughs> <laughs> um but uh they they, they both miss miss ori it is your turn all right i stand on the roof and i aim my longbow at um Papa. <laughs> and I'm going to take a shot at him using my sharpshooter. Oh, 11 to hit. It's a miss. It's a miss. And then I flop down on the roof and I hide using my cloak. <laughs> All right. Uh, it is Everett Lee's turn. Now, Everett Lee, as a, as a butcher, has an eye for blood. So he has advantage on attack rolls against anybody that doesn't have all their hit points. Uh, he's Quinn. also in a moonbeam. He's also I in a moonbeam. I now have my hit points back thanks to Rufus. So his saving throw. <laughs> um, uh, do you have all your hit points back? All of them. <laughs> yeah. Wait, because it's just temporary hit points. The, his and temporary. He's, oh, they don't. Yeah, I, I grant no. temporary hit points. Yeah. I don't, I, yeah. It's not full healing. Oh, so I just got ten. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I get a 13 on my saving throw against Moonbeam. Uh, no. No. I'm, so I'm going to roll some damage for you. <laughs> uh, Moonbeam, what do we got? 2d10. Uh, that's going to be 10 damage. All righty. He takes the damage, but also dishes back uh, 15 slashing damage to Quinn. 15? Yeah. Okay. Dang. Oh, do I get? Oh, do I get half of that because I'm still raging? Yes. Correct, Abundo. Okay. Hang in there, Quinn. <laughs> um. So He's I like, think though, what he is gonna do is uh, he's gonna say, "All right, boys, you hold them off," and he is going to uh, he's gonna try to step out of the moonbeam because he doesn't want to keep taking that damage. Mm-hmm. So he is gonna provoke an attack of opportunity from you, Quinn. Oh, really? Not yes. so fast, big boy. And I will be swinging the hammer because that's the strongest thing I have. I'm still raging. It's going to be... Oh, this is going to be so good. 23 to hit. That's a hit. And 10, 15, 
17. Ugh. Plus, I because it's opportunity, I can't add sneak attack. So I think it's just 17. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So there we are. So he moves out of the moonbeam. He takes the damage, but he he does move move on uh on out of it and uh back and I think he's going to end up moving uh, uh he started there, so I'm going to take him Ah, no, I don't want to move you. I want to move you. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to move him back through the boys. Yeah, he's he's actually heading back in towards the the house himself. Okay. Yeah. Where Mama is. Yep. Okay. So with that, we go. Uh, Quinn, it is your turn. It is my turn. Excellent. So let me see where who I'm close to right now. You're surrounded I, by three dogs. Oh, I guess the dogs. Oh, but they're all scared of me. And I get, three do dogs I get advantage? Six heads. Uh, if you reckless attack and let other people have advantage on attacks against you, yes, you do. They're on a disadvantage, but if I recklessly attack, then they have an advantage against me. But do I have an advantage? No, I don't. No, I don't. Never mind. Okay. A long time to my bar. Oh my gosh. So she's going to. Quinn is going to step up to the plate for the one since oh, the one that's between me and Ori because it looks like it also, also could attack her. Attack her, and she's still raging. And she's going to take her um, hammer. And with the butt of it, she's going to attempt to, like, literally batter up and just swing that way. All righty. Go for it. See. Oh, 19. It's a hit. This never happens to me. Plus nine. 11 damage. Oof. <laughs> Uh, the the dog is really wounded. You batter in one of its two heads, but it, fortunately, it's got two heads, so it can keep going. <laughs> Ew! So one head is like slapping to the side, yeah, and the just, other one's like, rah, 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 rah. yeah. This is an abomination. Yep. All right. Uh, the the dogs are gonna come back at it though. So your your roar is no longer in effect. So they're no longer, no longer frightened. It's just one turn, correct? I'm double checking. Let's see. It's a bonus action. Creatures of your choice within 10 feet can hear you must succeed in wisdom and become frightened until the end of my next turn. Okay, so they're no longer frightened. Mm -mm. So one of them's in the moonbeam uh, and gets a seven on the saving throw. That's going to be 17 damage. <laughs> oh, wow. Standing. Moonbeam, moonbeam is gross. Moonbeam is gross. I love it. Um, the one, it does get a 19 to hit, though. Oh, I get a 17 with another one of their one of them uh, and yeah. I do get two I do get two hits in with the two dogs so okay. um, Quinn you're gonna take two hits okay. uh, for a grand total between the two hits of 12 damage so that goes to six damage because it because of the okay so six and what I'm sorry go ahead uh, it goes to six damage total after your resistance. And don't forget, guys, okay. to roll for your uh, temp HP. Even if you still have it, okay. if you roll higher, you can take it. Got it. Or if you've lost any, just roll again to see if you get more. You can't, you can't add... Yeah, you guys know. You can't add temp HP on top of each other. It doesn't stack. No. But you always just roll 1d6 plus 4 and see if it's better than what you got. Okay, so... Rufus, it's your turn. All right. Rufus... Uh, takes on a bit of a different personality that you guys haven't seen, and he barges out, and he looks Perfect. he looks a little perturbed. It's the angriest you've ever seen Rufus, and he goes, "I don't like what's going on here. You you all need to behave. This is this is not very sportsmanlike. Locking me in a and, and, and it's like his moonbeams there, and he's holding up his holy symbol." Um, and he's going to, first of all, he's going to move the moonbeam over Bruno and Everett. Okay. Uh, with his action. And then it's, with... It's an action to move the moonbeam, eh? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, so he moves it over Bruno and Everett. And then he start still holding his holy symbol up. Uh, you see like a swirling galaxy appear and the little swirling galaxy is going to actually appear next to Everett and it's my spiritual weapon. Okay. 
and uh, it gets too, too big. big to be a sparkling to be a spiritual weapon. I will make it smaller. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, and it's going to attack. Okay. Twenty-three. It's a hit. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, spiritual weapon one d eight. Where is my d eight? There it is. That's going to be seven more damage. Oof. So there's like moonlight shining on them. There's a sparkling little swirl of stars and galaxies smashing into them. Uh, Rufus is having none of this. He's been treated poorly today. We go to the butcher boys, uh, and one of the boys starts in the moonbeam mm-hmm. uh, and fails the saving throw. Wonderful. Uh, that's going to be 16 damage. Ugh. That leaves him bloodied. Um, he stumbles out of it. Uh, he stumbles out of the moonbeam, and the two boys drop their crossbows, pick up their clubs, and they go to smash you in the face, Rufus. No! Uh, I get a 15 and a 16 to hit. Uh, I hold out my little moon shield and block. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. I'm going to have them actually stand like that. Um, great. Um, so, Ori, it is your turn. All right, I stand up again. Sh- uh, aim my. I'm going to aim my longbow at Bruno. And go for it. Let's see. Ooh, wow. Um, tw- a 20 to hit. It's a hit. Okay. At Bruno? See. At Bruno. Uh, and... See, so 20 damage. That kills Bruno. Oh no! <laughs> oh no way! <laughs> so okay. you, you don't do. want to fight, and then he just dies. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> Sorry, Bruno. Um, and then, <laughs> okay, instead of moving him, I am going to then move five feet horizontally back a bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually diagonally just so I can like kind of be beside the chimney um, and again hide with my cloak with my bonus action alright um, Everett Lee screams as his son dies um, and, and he says and he said, that boy ate through 300 pounds of my finest meat to get that big and um, as he as he screams out, he clutches the wounds on him and is like, Ma, get the bandages. I'm going to need it. And he takes his axe and he hurls it at Rufus. Uh, he should also make a save for Moonbeam. <laughs> he gets a 15. No. And he hurls the axe at you, uh, getting a 20 to hit. It hits. Uh, he takes... Uh, 15 damage from the moonbeam. Which is halved because he succeeded his save, correct? No, he didn't. You said he got a 15 on his save? Yeah. My save DC is 16. Oh, really? Okay. So he takes how much, sorry? Uh, he takes 15 damage. Okay, he is very wounded. Um, uh, you are going to take a total of 20 damage from the thrown axe. Oh! Make a concentration <laughs> check. Concentration... Uh, I got a 13. Uh, that That is enough. Ooh. Everett Lee barges back in uh, saying, you just wait, oh, I'm going to kill you all out there. And he barges back in and you hear this woman go, and you hear this woman's voice inside say, Everett Lee, what have you done to yourself? You're bleeding all over. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's your blood. You hear someone saying, he's like, yeah, it's my blood. <laughs> They made me bleed my own blood. <laughs> I hope she's not as big as him. <laughs> um, and with that, uh, that is Lee's turn. And Quinn, it is over to you. It is my turn. And I'm still surrounded by dogs, right? Or at least one head, two heads, two heads, right? Yep. Yep. You are. Two of the dogs are wounded. Don't fail me now. Come here, puppy, puppy. And again... It is batter up time for the dog that is. Let's see. 
the one that is right here. The one that's right between me and Ori. We just have to take these guys down one by one. And she swings. Please. Oh, natural 20, 27. Oh, nice. That's a critical hit. Roll it up. <laughs> it's going to be a 16 plus 2, standing 18. Damage. All right. That kills it. <laughs> what happens? <laughs> <laughs> she's like breathing heavy like over the dog's like length body and the heads are just sort of lolling around she's sort of like it's an abomination who's next who is um next? all right Wh which one did you strike this one the, the one the yeah the one that was right in between me and ori right. no between me and rufus it looks like yeah that one yeah great Alrighty. Uh, that makes my life a lot better. Thank you. <laughs> I turn and I'm like, thanks, Quinn. No problem. <laughs> okay. Um, the dogs. They're going to continue pressing their attack though on you, Quinn. Mm -hmm. uh, looks good. like I got a 22 to hit with the first one on uh, one of them. Dude. And a critical hit from the other. Wow. Uh, so between the two, Dude. they howl out seeing uh, one of their, their beloved butcher's boys die. Uh, and the two bites come in uh, for a grand total of uh, 17 points of damage, which is then halved. Okay. So it's, what, eight, eight, eight or seven? Eight. Uh, yeah, eight. We'll call it mm -hmm. eight. Mm -hmm. Rufus, it is your turn. Okay. Um, I cannot see where Everett went, right? He just no, he ran went into the into, house? He, he ran into the house. And I'm kind of locked up here. Okay, I'm going to... I'm gonna leave the moonbeam for now, and I'm gonna get Hugo out of my way. Um, so I am going to cast a Guiding Bolt on Hugo. Cool, because you're right up to him, that will be done with disadvantage. I do not like that. Um, you know what? I'm going to cast Sleep. Uh, it's been a while since I've cast this spell. Creatures within 20 feet of a point you choose within range. Oh, no, that... I can't dedicate which creatures are sleeped. Can yeah. I? Yeah. Oh, well, here goes... Okay. You know, I'm going to try the Guiding Bolt with disadvantage. We're going to try it. I, I need to get right. this guy out of my way. Okay, go for it. Ooh, um, so that is going to be an 18. Uh, wow. Good roll. Yeah, I rolled that a, hits. a 10 and a 13, and I have a plus 8, so it works. All right. All right. So, Guiding Bolt, point blank range. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not the greatest roll. That's only going to be 10 damage. All right. He hasn't been wounded yet. Um, did you want to move your spiritual weapon? Yeah, I'm going to use the spiritual weapon up to Hugo as well. Okay, that's within 20 feet, so that's fine. I got a 15 to hit. Also a hit. That is... Uh, that's going to be 10 more damage. Uh, that leaves him bloodied. Good. Uh, back to the top uh, with the Butcher's Boys. Uh, Hugo... Uh, it, it says, Dad, Dad, I don't want to die! And he's going to disengage and run. Do I get to make um, an attack against him? Uh, no, because he's disengaging. Oh, right. You just said that. I'm paying attention, I promise. Mm -hmm. um, I have a question, Rufus. But then, but, oh. yeah, what's up? Um, his healing is only, like, the one that was 1d6 plus 4 that's gone, right? Uh, it's not healing, it's temporary hit points. So copy. it only, it, 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 it can't heal you. It's just like a, a shield on top of got whatever it. you got. Yeah. But at the end got of it. every of your turns, every one of your turns, you get to roll a d6, add four. And if mm -hmm. you still have temp HP, uh, mm -hmm. if what you mm -hmm. roll is higher, then give yourself that. 
Got or, it's perfect. Yeah. So we can't get knocked down, basically. <laughs> there's there's so, like a little buffer yeah. every turn that replenishes yeah. every turn. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Um, Good to know. So Hugo runs from you, but then he sees the, the moonbeam and doesn't want to run into that. So it's he, just light. Keep going. So he falls on the ground crying and says, please don't, please don't. I promise I'll be a good boy. Um, and, um, he, you basically hear him crying out for, for his parents and to not be killed. Um, <laughs> Ori, it is your turn. All right. And I stand back up and I say, sorry, Hugo, this has to be done. <laughs> I aim my longbow <laughs> towards Hugo. Um, you will be spared, child. A 14? It's a hit. <laughs> okay. Uh, 18 damage. Uh, you shoot him down. Oh Never mind. <sighs> uh, and then I move, <gasps> use my swarm and I move myself five feet forward as well. Um, actually, uh, at this, I'm actually gonna, um, use some movement to get down off of the building. Um, okay. So I'm gonna get to there. All right. Uh, it's Everett Lee's turn, but he's uh, he. You, you hear hear some rustling and rumbling in the house, but that's it. Quinn, it's your turn. <laughs> Is that Mama in the house? The big Mama in the house. <laughs> oh, big Mama. <laughs> okay, Quinn is still raging, and she's going to. Batter up a dog. I'm gonna tell you, back it up. Here you go. Are you kidding me right now? Nine. <laughs> Submiss. Oh, but wait. Do I have advantage? Hold on here. Do if I? If you attack recklessly, yes, you do. Can I decide to attack recklessly? Now? <laughs> yeah, that, I'll allow it. Okay, no, right. Since we're fetching girls here tonight, Quinn is like tripping and screaming and, and roaring, and her hair's blowing, and she's going nuts, raging, and she decides to attack recklessly. So, swings again. Make this happen. Oh, that's a 22. Nice. And, let's see, three, eight, nine, ten. 10 damage. That takes out the dog right in front of you as well. Boom. There's just one la last one remaining. Um, this dog, seeing its two boys go, and the last one is going to disengage, and oh. it's going to run over the fence, whimpering away uh, and run. Opportunity? Uh, if you want to take it, yes. You can. Uh, yeah, it, it you're dying. It, Everyone's it, dying. It, it disengages, so <laughs> oh, okay. it, it's not an opportunity. Yeah, so it's just trying to get away. Um, right. With that, the the bo the butcher's boys are dead in the in the mud of the stockyard. The pigs are oinking. Um, <laughs> the dogs are running off, and Everett Lee has run back into in, into his house. We are at seven fifty two, and we haven't had a break yet. So I'm gonna oh. say, let's take fifteen, sure. recuperate. And then uh, see what's left on the menu at the Hog John Butcher. <laughs> and we are back from our break. We have taken our short rest, uh, recuperated, had all our consumables, and we're going to dive right back on into this and play some more D&D. &D. So when, before, before the break, our heroes had just, just killed the Butcher's boys and their dogs. You got the boys and their little dogs, too. <laughs> And now you're coming for mom and pa. <laughs> so, um, you stand uh, outside in the stockyard of the the butchers um, uh, of the butchers area. Uh, I'm guessing now the the spells are gone. Correct? Are we? We're out of initiative. We're uh, we're out of initiative. But if if it's less than a minute, we can pull them back in if you want to. If it is less than a minute, then probably. What I'd are you guys going to do? <laughs> um, what do you guys think? So I've just walked out of the smokehouse and I'm like, there was a lot happening out here while I was investigating the smokehouse. Is the tour finished? 
<laughs> I think the I tour think never done. really began. It was more like a kidnapping than a tour. Um, we should probably find him and and take care of him and uh, you know finish this business. Where did you put Wilbur? You put him over in the. Oh, he's just over hanging by the pigs. I point outside the fence. Wilbur is small enough that he kind of went under the fence and is now eating with the other pigs. Oh, no! He might be eating his own people! Oh, it's a piggy yeah. pig world out there. <laughs> <laughs> no! Um, should, should, we, should, we, should we go and try to take on the butcher, or should we go check out the barn? Which one... Do you think is more prominent of a of, of, of a danger? I don't want to give um, the butcher too much time to prepare. And also, did you guys hear another big human voice coming out of the house? Oh yeah. Then perhaps it's time to make them see stars. See, see what I did there? Oh yeah, we. we, we oh. Because I really like stars. So the, 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 like door, the doors to the back of the house are are these wide double, almost barn doors, like big enough that you could bring an animal up up into it. And it's less so stairs than a ramp leading in, into the house. It's clearly built so that you can bring an animal from the pig pen over into the building itself. Um, there's a well here. And there, and just overlooking the well is actually a frosted glass window. So there, uh, there are windows. There's one here, and the building over here. There's two very narrow and high windows uh, up over here and here over this broken cart. Um, so that's where you can see windows and doors uh, leading in. Now there was a door in the front entrance that led to. The inside of the building do you think we should go around that way or barge right in yeah that's what you know of the building right now right so you know that there's a there's the front door over here right and then mm -hmm. the the back door over here um and you you know that somewhere around here there there's the butcher's workshop itself but how the rest of the le you don't know the rest of the building layout inside hmm. so or your guess is good as mine I leave it to your incredible judgment. I'm just here to protect you and come along. We appreciate it, Rufus. I need to tell you guys something really quick yes. before we get... We have to hurry up. I have to get out of Drakenheim. Something is happening to me. What? Look. Please. I don't know what Drakenheim is doing to me or being around here on this side of the world is doing to me, but I've been hearing voices and these, I don't know what I'm turning into. So- Those aren't pig teeth, right? You didn't eat the bacon? <laughs> no, I didn't eat the bacon, sorry. <laughs> Well, if it's not the trying bacon- Trying to make sure it was delicious and you know, other people are transforming- Wait, it was delicious? No. Did you eat the bacon? It smelled no. delicious. It smelled good, it's in my okay. bag. I didn't touch it though, but I mean, that would at least give me some- mm. Yeah, something's happening here, so we have to find that relic. We have to finish up here, find that relic, kick Leon's butt, whatever, and I have to get out. I have to get home. I have to go and home. let's do it. Okay. Let's find him. Let's go. Front door. All right. Front door? You're, You're going to take the front, front door? door? Mm hmm All right. Well, the, in that case, you barge around the front door <laughs> to, the, to the front, kick it through, and uh, are able to barge through into the larger butcher's area. Incidentally, they both lead to the same place. <laughs> <laughs> we like the way the front door sounded. <laughs> yeah. This is uh, the butcher's workshop. Um, and all in here are the butcher slabs and all the various tools of butchery um, from meat grinders to uh, the, the slab itself, butcher's axes. There's a pig carcass strung up here and there are two doorways leading out of this room. Um, a small door beside the, the, the fireplace that warms this room and another pair of double doors up over here. Both sets of doors are closed. You can also see that there is a staircase leading down 
to a basement. Oh, uh, we were told not to go well, there. If we Why were not? told not to go there, that's exactly where we should go. Um, Ooh. the small door, is it big enough to actually have the butcher go through it? Uh, he would have to dip under, but yes. I meant more, I meant more <laughs> with the wise. Do we still hear them? Like, are they still yammering? Or no, has that you don't stopped? hear them at all now. Mm. Okay, we have to be really careful because he wasn't dead and she sounded big and hungry. Well, I know a lot about being big and hungry. <laughs> Which um, way will you go? Sandwich. Shall we try the main floor first? Yes, definitely. Have your wits about you. Mm. All right. All of you. Do. Um... May the pork be with you. Let's do the small door, then the big door, then we'll take the stairs if we can't find them. Sound good? All right. Yeah, sounds great. <laughs> All right, Quinn, come over here and get your hammer ready. I'm gonna open up this door. You open the doors and there's a kitchen beyond. <gasps> oh, okay. That's um, pretty sure. There are all manner of provisions and it spell smells faintly of spices, actually. Um, there's something vile on the stove um, and there's a staircase that leads up probably to the apartments above. Huh. Um, oh. I, I would have... like to, you um, as an action, I would like to open my awareness to the presence of concentrated magic to see mm. if there's any magic type or anything going on in this entire place. 60 feet. You sense the butcher's axe. It's to the northwest. But also, there is magic in all the meat. Oh, I didn't want to know that. Um, I wonder if there's rattling in that meat. I could always taste it and find out. I don't, I don't think meat. we're going to do there's any of that. that. <laughs> oh, right. The content. <laughs> Sorry. I, <laughs> uh, I hit him with a hunter's Rufus. mark, which gives me advantage on perception or survival check to find him. Um, mm. Is there any, like, any fresh, like, I guess, meat footprints that I see on or the like ground? A trail of blood? Yeah, give me an know. investigation check. I mean, I guess there's a lot of blood. It's a butcher shop. So is it investigation or uh, it's a survival or perception? I don't know. Oh, sure. Then give me uh, either survival or perception. Your perception. 14. There are bloody footprints that look recent leading to the door of the north. Mm. Um... And I point to the <laughs> bloody footprints on the ground. I'm like, I think he might have gone this way. I creep over and stand awaiting. I stand behind this pig. <laughs> All right. You head up to the north door. I. Do I hear anything? You hear a dripping noise. Drip, drip. Drip, drip. I push the doors open and at the same time I yell, my tour wasn't over. <laughs> Beyond is a horrific abattoir. It is a large room with, um, and in the center of the room is a strung up, one of the huge pig carcasses strung up upside down, attached to a meat hook on the ceiling. Mm. It has been gutted and it is bleeding and, and it's been ripped open in the middle and its throat has been slashed and it is bleeding out into a bucket underneath it on the floor. And there's buckets of organs, of pig organs, uh, like basically of its insides. This was the most recent thing. There's a tub of water that is hot, um, a hot water that has a boiling stove underneath it as well. And then there is, uh, from this room, you can see there's actually something quite strange in this room. The meat hook on this, that the, is holding the pig up is on a rail on the ceiling. And the rail goes from where it's hanging up to the stairs leading downstairs. As if you could leave the pig on the meat hook and slide it down the stairs without having to carry it. 
Do the footsteps head to the stairs? There's a lot of blood <laughs> at this point. It's hard to tell. Give me one more perception check, Ori. Seventeen. Yeah, there's footprints in the blood. Mm. I, I head to the stairs, and it, does it look really dark down there? Pitch black. My friends. It's also yeah. palpably cold. Gather round, gather round. Um, I, I, I kind of huddle you guys up, and I'm like, we're going to go into the basement. It's going to be dark and possibly scary, but I want you to know that the stars have guided us this far and they will continue to guide us and you are safe as long as you follow the will of Tarna's Comet, which has led us all here. Now, it is very dark down there, but I want you to know that you have starlight on your side and I'm going to use my eyes of the night ability and I'm going to grant all three of us, if we don't have dark vision, we do now. If you did have dark vision, it is now out to a range of 300 feet. Nice. Are you going to head downstairs? Uh, after after you, Quinn. You may not know this about halflings, but we're very b brave people. Uh, then after I'm you, ready. Ori? Either one of you. Whoever would like to go first can place themselves first. <laughs> you know, I'm not that as brave as, you know, Quinn over here. Quinn is the most brave. So Quinn, you should go first. Oh, oh, you're muted. I think you're muted. Lost your audio. Oh no. Is it back? Oh, there we go. There, there, there you go. go. Oh, of course. They're trying. They're trying to silence me. They will not silence me in this butcher house. So she now, I now have 300, 300 feet, 300 uh, dark vision. So she steps in front. Okay. Holds her hammer up and heads down the stairs. You st head down the stairs, leading the way. The air down here is freezing cold um it's it brings you down just enough that the way the whole place is constructed it's it's like a freezer down here and strung up through the on this in this room on on the pillars are pig carcasses butchered <laughs> pig carcasses and here in the room in a pool of blood in the center is everett lee and an an another equally large woman and she is taking a slab of pig skin and a needle and sewing it over his gut and repairing his wounds and you can see the flesh is like melting into his own flesh almost like healing his wounds from earlier as she takes the pig's flesh and in and you can see as she does this in her hand, she's holding a delirium crystal. And she's holding it, pressing it into his flesh. And as she does so, the pig's flesh merge, melts into his own and heals his wounds. He picks up the axe as you come into the room and says, Well, welcome to your last sight. Roll for initiative. <laughs> oh my gosh. I rolled a two. <laughs> I, sh I, I should have given you... Can can I give one of them advantage on initiative? or that's, Sure, I, sure. Uh, Quinn, you get advantage on initiative. I Do did I? that earlier. Well, we're pretending. Oh, okay. When I gave us all dark vision, I also gave you advantage on initiative. <gasps> Using Yay. my... What's it called? Cool. Ori, what you got? 19. Okay. 18. 18 for Quinn. I got seven. Seven for Rufus. Okay, so it actually goes Everett, then all of you guys, then Bertha. So as you come in, in into the room, um, Everett Everett Lee takes his axe up and says, "All right, then, let's do this one more time. Come on, I'm gonna carve you up like a." 
surprise pig. <laughs> um, and uh, you can see that he, he holds his axe high, ready to bring it towards anyone that will that walks into the uh, that walks into the room. Hmm. Ori, it is your turn. All right, I drop down to my knees. And through Quinn's legs, I aim my longbow at him. Whoop. Uh, 15 to hit. Ah, that's a hit. Ooh, okay. Yay! He still has his hunter's mark. Um, (laughs) So he gets an extra d6 of damage. And I'm going to use my swarm as well to give him extra damage, too. So that's going to be uh, another Dang. extra d6. Um, <laughs> let's roll these dice. Um, so the fireflies gather around the arrow and shoot towards Everett, uh, giving me 22 damage. Oh. oh man! I oh, thought I wow. healed, but I... nice. there goes all the healing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. And Quinn, then, it. Oh, uh, I, uh, Ori, sorry, finish up. Bonus action! I step through. Uh, I guess how wide is the staircase? It's wide enough that you can move through your allies because you're right. a small, small um, one. Then I step back and I use my bonus action to hide. Alrighty. <laughs> Quinn, it's your right. turn. Okay, I would like to... Can I just make my um, hammer something that can... I don't know if I can do this. If I can, if, if I throw it, can it come back to me? <laughs> Is it magical? Can I make it magical? No. Mm, no, no, I don't you think can so. throw it if you want to. I'll just have to get it later, won't I? Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, okay. So you know what? She's just gonna stay where she is, and she's gonna look at the hammer and go, "You know what you want to do," and she's just going to rah, scream with rage and attack recklessly. All right. Are you th- are you throwing the hammer or are you gonna run in? Um. Hold on. Checking my stats. One second. You know what? She's gonna run in because she's reckless. She's All done right. In. She's done with the whole party. She's done with Bertha. She's been done with Everett, and she's hungry, and she has sharp teeth, so she's turning into something angry. Let's see, you uh, look too happy there, Monty. <laughs> I unfortunately, I only get a ten to hit with Everett's ready to attack. So 25. roll it up. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. That's a hit. hit. And let's see. So that's three, eight, nine, ten. And ooh, do I get a advantage with reckless attack? Wait. Yep. I yep. Do. So that's eight or got it. One second. Ten. Let's go at twelve because of the two plus rage drink. So that's twelve. Alrighty. Damage. Not quite enough to take him down, but he's on his last le- uh, last bits of life are 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 in him. Anything else, Quinn? That's it for me. Rufus. Rufus steps into the room and announces, Mercury's retrograde has ended, and I'm going to bless all three of us. Nice. So everyone gets an extra D4 on their attack rolls and saving throws. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Thank you. And then as a bonus action. No, no, no. Oh, nope. That's all. All right. <laughs> uh, Bertha takes out two smaller meat cleavers and circles around you, Quinn, uh, mm-hmm. and starts slicing at you with the meat cleavers. Um, with uh, Because you were reckless, she does get advantage on the attacks. So she does get one hit in for a 20 to hit uh, yes, for 12 points of damage. Okay, so that means she gets 12 points, or do I take half because I'm raging or no? Uh, you take half because you're raging, correct. Okay, and I have something else I want to do with that since she attacked me. She has on, Quinn has on her, as her uncommon item, this rod that she takes from behind her. And she's breathing heavy because, you know, she has blood on her and she's disgusted at this point. And with this... Wait, wait, wait. 
It's called a rod of retribution. She looks at her and says, I wasn't planning on killing two people today. I guess we're gonna make that happen. And she would like to point the rod right at her and she has to make a DC 13 deck saving throw because she gave me damage and, the, and she has to take 2d10 lightning damage on a failed save or half as much on a successful one. Alrighty. Um, all right. Uh, she gets a 12 on her saving throw. Uh, so 2d10 uh, lightning 2D10. damage. Eleven. Nice. All right. Uh, she screeches uh, as the the uh, rod electrocutes her. Um, so we go back up to Everett Lee, who he um, uh, he brings out his axe, says, "Now, ladies, y'all be nice," and swings his axe, getting a nineteen to hit against you. Oh. Uh, for okay, so you fail. So, uh, 19 would match your AC, which would hit. Yeah. Uh, for right. 14 damage, which is half to seven. Okay, I'm going to say I'm going to point my rod because I have three charges going right at it. Yes, but you only get one reaction per turn. Oh, that's right. I only get yeah. one as a yeah. bonus action, right? But it's your, it'll be your turn shortly. So, Ori, it is over to you, though. <laughs> All right, I come back out. I take it. Um kind of in the middle and I see Everett's really hurt I'm going to take another shot at him don't forget your d4 uh 23 to hit it's a hit okay what do we got Mm -hmm. and yeah I'm going to take my fireflies are going to do an extra d six on that as well so uh hunter's mark in that Woo! 24 damage all right if i can make a con save i'll keep it fighting (laughs) natural 20 on the uh uh horrific fortitude so he stays fighting for one more round he's at one hit point (laughs) and where are the pigs around here (laughs) they're uh where the posts are basically okay um i'm gonna go one and can i hide here or no yeah uh yeah you can hide there okay i guess it's dark down here anyways so Hmm. quinn it's your turn god so she is examining her hammer and she's like you still have more kills than you left help me get out of drakenheim help me find the relic Help me find out who I am. And she swings. I can't sing. I can't. Can I swing recklessly again since my yep. first turn? Is that? Yep. Yeah, she's still she's still sort of going through changes here. And she didn't have any of the meat, so she doesn't know what's wrong with her. Screams and 15 to hit. It's a hit. Otherwise, I was going because I would have had to do it again 10. I won't. I, I let, let's see if my my. Uh, so the the uh, resilience is all busted. I can only use that once per short rest. So unfortunately, this is the end of the. Ho- He's only got one hit point left. So I don't think you can do less than one damage. So what happens to the Hogtown Butcher? <laughs> Twenty. Oh, it's thirteen plus two plus the D four. It would have been whatever. <laughs> all right. What happens to how do, how do you end the life of the Hogtown Butcher? Oh. <laughs> so she walks up so she she said what she said to her beloved hammer and she's like the end of you has come your days as a meat deliverer or meat server are over your family is gone your life is gone your livelihood is gone we will proudly take it from you good night and she takes the butt of her hammer and she just stabs it right into him. Oh, with a gory, wet stab, the Hogtown Butcher and collapses like, to the ground. Oh. <laughs> with that noise when she pulls it out. <laughs> Rufus, it's your turn. Uh, Rufus steps into the room 
uh, seeing the final moments of the Hogtown Butcher, turns to Bertha and is going to cast Guiding Bolt. Alrighty, go for it. Twenty-four. That's a hit. And I'm going so. I hold up. I hold up my my moon pendant, and I'm like, "Moonlight, do your thing!" And it bursts out <laughs> in a beam towards her, uh, doing a measly nine damage. Uh. Well, with that though, that is still enough oh. to end end her life as she what? collapses to the ground beside the Hogdown Butcher. I, um, oh, I'm sorry. I guess they now, can't tell us if they saw Liam. So <laughs> as you look up, you can see that there is actually a hole that has been broken into the wall here, huh. leading into another smaller room where there are three cages. As you go inside, you can see that inside two of the cages are bubbling masses of flesh. Some a partly human-like face, and it it it's all and as the bubbling mounds of flesh with like a human limb and a pig-like limb and pig-like features are shuddering and shaking as if it's trying to pull itself together and decide what form it's going to take. And meanwhile, there in one of the other cells is a sad looking man who has the head of a pig human hands and human feet and uh, has otherwise been stripped down to his skivvies but you can see that even though he has a pig head he still has this mohawk and these piercings on the pig head uh are you Leon oh he says Oh, in the piggish voice, he can. Yeah. Oh, wow. I'm Leon. Please, you've got to help me get me out of here. Well, I mean, we've been looking for you because we uh, are looking for something that you stole. Oh. You mean, you're here. Listen, if you if you if you get me out of here, I'll tell you where I buried it. I'll tell you, it's not far. I I, I buried it under the Eckerman Mill. I mean, I don't even have to let you out of this cage today. You just told me where it was. <laughs> but I will add a cage because I'm a nice person and I but, use my thieves but, tools and I start to unlock it. And I look at you, you Quinn. You got it. I I need that though. I, I needed. I, I was supposed to bring it to the pale man so that so that he could help me. And and I, and now there's no hope. Ah, look what's happened to me. I feel Calm getting down. worse. Where did you say it was buried? I buried it under Ackerman Mill. All right, we're taking Oops. this one with us just in case he's lying. Let's I'm. Go. I'm, I'm meanwhile, I'm like holding the body of the Hogtown Butcher and I'm shaking it and I'm like, tell us how to undo the pig thing. <laughs> tell us, <laughs> tell us how. Maybe uh, the relic talking. does all of it though. Maybe the relic does all of it. Perhaps. I don't know. Maybe. Let's um, find out. Are there any chains around? Lots. Okay. Um, I want to unlock the cage, but I want to chain them up and use the padlocks that I stole to <laughs> mm. lock them in the chains. Yeah. Um, you know where Eckerman Mill is. It's on the outskirts of town. Um, it's, a, it's a famous gathering place for adventurers. Um, and without too much effort, um, you're able to collect Wilbur and Leon <laughs> and bring them to Eckerman Mill. And, and Leon is able to show you where he buried the relic as he does so he collapses to the ground and finishes transforming completely into a pig wilbur you have a brother oh no i mean is it really that bad were you really i mean is it better than you were before were you i mean i don't know listen it seems to be an absolute horrible situation that i wouldn't wish upon my worst enemies but since we're here I think I'm going to start a pig farm and take care mm. of these critters. I'll bring them with me on my pilgrimage. And, Maybe you can um, get some goats too? Yeah, but, I, I would love to. 
with a little bit of digging, you're able to dig up a box that inside is the relic of the lion with its mouth grasping a vial of blood that you have been searching for. We found it! It's the relic my mother told me about on her deathbed. This is it! What, so what is it supposed what to do? do? I mean, I'm holding it. What, what do, I mean, it's holding a vial of blood. Rufus, anything? Mm. Do you need to do with something like this? Can I see it um, for a second? My star signs only told me to follow you. I do not know the answer to this quest. The vial of blood. Do you think we're supposed to break it? Listen, I, I might know someone who might know about this. I think you should come with me and, and bring the relic and come see some, some people that I know and maybe I can get you some information about it. I know a lot of people. Okay, we'll do that. All I right. trust you, Ori, with I all too. my heart. Good. I trust both of you. May I oh. see the relic for a second? Yes. And, and take Quinn the hands relic. the relic to Ori. And I start to back away and say, listen, mm -hmm. these people, They've been looking for you. And they've been looking for this. For me? For you. I don't know what they want from you, but Quinn, you gotta come with me. And I start to back away a little bit more. Don't do anything to that relic. Don't drop it. Keep your hands on it. I'll come with you. All right. Oh. Did I miss something? No, no. Not to I, trust I, you. I'm looking, I'm looking through my, my star signs and I'm just like, I told curious. you I was looking for uh, uh, my, well, my person that I'm supposed to take in. I just happened not to say that it was you, Quinn, and we needed this first. And I start to back away even more. I say, you better come with me or I'm going to smash this thing on the ground. Quinn sort of puts her hammer back on her back and she says, I'm walking toward you now. I'm not doing anything. All right. Well, let's Put go take in and down. I can get my money from this quest, finally! I owed you, but we're finished! And I can get my cash. Ori, I've trusted you for as long as I've known you. All week, the four to five days that we have spent together, I put all of my trust in you, and now you are betraying the other person I just met who I endlessly trust. <laughs> I think I misread the star signs. I'm seeing now that the Firefly and the lion are both in the sky, but the firefly shines brighter, betraying the lion. Rufus, be quiet! Oh, sorry. I'm just trying to make sense of it. <laughs> I don't know why they want to like see you, to. but, you know, they might have some information. I'm just meant to take you there with this relic. Quinn is weighing whether or not she should follow Ori, or if she should try to kill her on the spot. I'll do both. All right. I'm coming with you now, Ori, to your right. people, as you say. And if you happen to kill me, well, you saved my life anyways, so it's in your hands. Um, if I'm not needed here, I can go continue my pilgrimage. I, I No, you're coming with us, Rufus, and she takes oh. Rufus' shirt like this, and she drags him along <laughs> oh, after oh. Ori. <laughs> Where do I go? I need that mood, like, thing you have. Whatever okay. that is. Mm. I guess I'm bound to this quest now. <laughs> in, in, indeed. Well, we may never find out what happens as Ori leads Rufus and uh, and our good friend Quinn to buckle down row to meet the Queen of Thieves. Perhaps one day we will find out in our next adventure in Untold Tales and more Untold Tales and Drakenheim. Next time we can have Alicia join us. But that is where our story ends for now. <laughs> <laughs> Ori, you little, you little. The story of betrayal. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, but uh, in, in any case, um, what will uh, we will have to wait to find out what happens be be of of Leon and Wilbur the pigs? <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, the pigs. Pigs. We can sleep and live together, get some goats, make it a whole family. I want to start a farm. <laughs> we're just going to start a farm. 
<laughs> but fantastic. Uh, um, and uh, I uh, look forward to uh, hopefully being able to explore the mystery of uh, Alicia's character, Quinn. Uh, maybe the next time we get to play together. Who knows when that will be? But uh, that's been our little bit of a theme of, of ending these stories with the what's next so uh, i th i think though that is where Fine. our story for now will end the <laughs> relic in hand our heroes going to meet ori's a uh, little bit of a double cross <laughs> towards the end Ooh. you did not see it coming you, you are I, such an innocent character i walked right into it <laughs> gotta do what you gotta do in dragon home to make ends meet <laughs> I'm like, oh, Indeed. the most valuable and, thing I need. Here, have it. <laughs> and when ends meet, uh, that's when uh, we'll end our meeting. Um, so thank you all so much. This was such a treat uh, to, to try this. It was so wonderful playing with you, Alicia. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed uh, this little creepy chapter, a uh, little creepy side quest that uh, you can find in Drakenheim um, with uh, with all this string of connections. Um what uh as always a big thank you once again alicia <laughs> and of course jill joining us back for a pair of sessions and to kelly as well um uh, as we uh play this all up um and Ooh. a big thank you as well to kyle for running everything behind the scenes uh in our chat and also I, uh, a huge thank you to Dungeon Master Monty Martin for running this new <laughs> chapter that we worked on, The Hogtown Butcher, which will be in the Drakenheim book. And uh, you will probably see it tied to many of the factions in Drakenheim as well. So thank you very much for running such a great game, Monty. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. I mean, Monty, thank you're you. an ins insanely good storyteller. I mean, you grossed me out and you caused me to react. And that means that you did good. So so thank you both for having me on the show. Oh, and thank, thank you everybody you who came here to much. watch. It's such a good time. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Me too. Well, we, we look forward to be, being able to get to play with you again one day soon, I hope. Um, in, in the meantime, for the, the rest of us, uh, Kelly and I will be taking uh, next week off. Um, we had a little bit of a scheduling flub, but we will. Kelly and I will be back on the 16th. Uh, of March. Um, we will probably not be playing on the 16th, but we will be talking more exciting Drakenheim stuff as Kelly and I go over uh, how the writing is going on the book. Uh, we're going to probably talk about that and just the process that we're in, where we're at, and give you a little bit more previews about what's to come. So be sure to join us uh, then when we're just going to give you a little bit more of an overview of how it's going, we're answer your questions, talk about that whole process and what you can expect uh, over the, the coming weeks and months as we build up towards our uh, uh, hopefully launching the Kickstarter for Dungeons of Drakenheim in the summer uh, uh, this year so you will be able to run Drakenheim for your very self uh, using the 5th edition rules. Uh, then we will be back again on the 23rd and 30th of March with another very special guest uh, author Matt Ruff, the author of Lovecraft Country, who will be playing D&D uh, &D with us. He hasn't played D&D &D in years and is really excited to get going with that as well. So wow. we will be diving right back in on there. And then after after that, Shadows of Drakenheim is coming back. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, at, at this stage, we, we will be coming back with Shadows of Drakenheim on April 13th. Uh, we, uh, hopefully that'll give Jill a nice birth, uh, a nice, a nice break. <laughs> nice birth. Uh, of, uh, yeah, uh, well, of uh, a nice birth to catch up with the birth. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, so the the whole crew, uh, Jill, Joe, uh, and Kelly will be back with Shadows of Dragon Time as you return in in there. So that's just what's coming down the pipeline. It's all going to be here. Of course, we live stream every Tuesday nights with the breaks aforementioned in in there, uh, and we uh, uh, from six to nine on twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. Kelly, where can they find our, uh, our other stuff? Well, we create weekly episodes on YouTube. We actually upload videos every other Tuesday and on Thursdays. You can find that at youtube.com slash dungeon dudes. And you can also join our Patreon, which uh, is patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. If you enjoy the work that we do, a lot of this is made possible thanks to our Patreon community, which also has an exclusive Discord where you can hang out with us and contribute to upcoming scripts. You can 
submit questions for Q&As, and just hang out with us and chat with us about all things Drakenheim and D&D. So find us all on there. And Season 1 and Season 2 are available on podcast as well on most major platforms. Uh, Alicia, where can everyone find all your amazing stuff? <laughs> okay, everybody, I'm Alicia Marie, and you can find me everywhere on social media at Alicia Marie Body. Uh, costume, costume, concept creator. <laughs> These things out of my mouth can talk about them. And uh, pretty much a fitness pro type. So if you're interested in any of that type of content, find me on social media. Every Saturday, I play a Fallout sort of adaptation of 5e on Fabled 42 here on Twitch. Otherwise, I'm just bouncing around doing RPG stuff and trying to stay sane during the pandemic, shut yeah. down, whatever, and no convention life. So that's why you always see me looking crazy like this in every game. Anyway, I had a great time, but Alicia Marie Body on socials. Come on, see how Thank you so much. Did we plug our you. Patreon, Kelly? Oh, uh, yeah, Patreon? I did. I did. You did. Great. Damn. All right. Well, there we there we go. Oh, and uh, the Jill, you got any plugs for us? Yes. Uh, don't forget to take a look at the links below for our Teespring store where you can find all of your favorite Dungeon Dudes t-shirts, including, yes, 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 including um, the new ones for Dusk Wardens, uh, all of your faves at bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. And the the final bit of thank, thank yous, the maps that you saw tonight were made by yours truly, myself, using Dungeon Draft. Uh, wow. So I've been checking that one out. It's pretty cool as well. We, we use Roll20 and a bunch of the tokens on Roll20 as well for our online gameplay. Uh, and and so if you're looking on there, on the uh, we use a variety of token artwork by Matthias Bourbon as well for all of uh, Rufus Apollo's kind of fun spell effects and stuff like that. <laughs> uh, and and uh, we got music also going up by Tabletop Audio. So thank you all so much. That's all for this evening, and we will see you once again in Drakenheim.